chocolate. Tom Thomas, unwrap it already. In the morning, Nolik. I really want to see the toy that's inside. Be patient, Nolik. That's all. I'm going to bed. Please don't touch it, okay? And you won't open it without me, right? That's a deal. Oh, good night, Nolik. Uh huh. doing in here? Me? Well, I was... Oh, it's a chocolate ball with a toy inside. <gasps> How interesting. Yeah, totally. Let's unwrap it and take a look. We can't. Not until Tom Thomas comes in the morning. But if we're real careful, he won't notice. A chocolate confection. Yeah. A piece of perfection. <gasps> Perhaps oh. I'll give that shining <laughs> Took a look. Tom Thomas won't be happy at all when he finds out you touched his chocolate ball. And you? Like you didn't touch it? I didn't. Oh, then what's that, Nolik? <gasps> chocolate? Absolutely. It's a hundred percent natural milk chocolate. It says so right here. <laughs> the key ingredient in chocolate is cocoa beans. They are roasted, crushed, and ground. After that, the ground beans are pressed to extract the oil from them. If you mix butter, cocoa, and sugar, you'll get dark chocolate. And if you add some milk to it, then you'll get milk chocolate. Then you just warm it up, pour it into molds, and cool it down. You can add raisins or nuts into chocolate. Sometimes chocolate is even made with flavors like flowers or salt. Chocolate wasn't originally for eating. It was used in a drink made by mixing roasted beans with water and then adding hot peppers. Not every adult could drink it, let alone a child. Today, chocolate is a favorite treat the world over for children and adults alike. How can we put it back together? How about scotch tape? Come on! We'll start by warming up the chocolate so it softens up and then use that to make a new ball. And then to make it hard again... Yeah, we just cool it off. My chocolate confection has got an imperfection. Half of it's gone into thin air. But this is expected. When chocolate goes unprotected first, you have got it. Then it's not there. Not there. Not there. Tiddish! Done. Let's put in the toy. But we haven't even looked at it yet. Oh, it's so pretty. Tom Thomas is gonna love it. Oh, wait! Oh, what do you think of this idea? I've got a new confection of chocolate perfection. Safe in his rubber shine. But I can't take off the wrapper without Nolik. You really can't do it without him? I can't. I told Nolik I wouldn't. Mmm, your chocolate is gonna be delicious. Go on, you can eat a little. Hmm, if you say so, I'll eat the chocolate. But we won't open the toy without Nolik. Mmm, good chocolate. Come on, don't you want to know what the toy is? We won't tell. All right, just a peek, and we'll close it right up. What is this for? Teesh! Nolik? Really? How did you get in there? Surprise! Hmm. You were in the container, the container was in the chocolate ball, and the yep. ball... That's just impossible. Ah, 
He went and got you two to help. We helped a little. Hang on, Nolik. You promised not to touch the chocolate till morning. And you promised not to open the toy without me, right? Oh, my goodness! <laughs> The detective. All right, there yeah, that is. Wasn't it great that we got to stay after class and watch that movie together? Yeah, that film was great. That detective, what a guy. He figured out exactly who did it. Ooh. Solving a crime is not easy at all. But it looks like a lot of fun. Ugh, I think it would be so cool to go solve a crime. <gasps> Where's my lucky screwdriver? I can't do anything without it. Here we go. This could be the crime of the century. Detective Nolik, are you ready? But we are not. There's no escaping our fate, colleague. Our time has come. In order to become a detective or an investigator, you need to be very attentive and astute because detectives solve mysteries, find missing things, and detangle the most twisted cases. For instance, who ate the whole cake without permission? A real detective will notice the minor details right away. Crumbs under the sofa, a trail of paw prints across the room. By following the clues, a real detective will easily discover the thief. All right, it's time for us to figure out who stole the screwdriver. And the screwdriver, don't we need to find it? Not now. First, let's find the thief. Oh, look at that. It's Digit. Digit? Huh? Why are you back at the laboratory? Our school classes are over. I want to talk to the professor. I came up with the coolest thing to make. What cool thing? It's a secret. That's a bit hard to believe. All right now, suspect. What were you doing after school? What do you mean, suspect? There must be some mix-up here. You're trying to dodge the question? You want to change the subject on me? That's it. I'm leaving. No screwdriver, no experiments. Well... You want to take over for your genius, and that's why you stole his lucky screwdriver. You're under arrest. The main qualities of a detective are intelligence and logic. Logic is an ancient science that teaches people to think with reason, to help them solve problems, puzzles, and riddles. Do you want to feel what it's like to be a real detective? Then try to figure out what I'm describing to you. I'm thinking of an animal that you can meet at home or on the street. It has a tail and it's long. You have any guesses? A dog, a cat, or a mouse? Uh-huh, there's not enough information yet. But what if I add that it meows and sleeps all day long? Then the answer is clear. A detective works the same way. He collects the facts, decides what's important, gets rid of what's not, and only then figures out the right answer. Understand? Then you're ready for another puzzle. Tell me, who doesn't belong here? Are you gonna talk? <clears throat> funny mustaches you got there. Oh, it's a party, right? Mm-hmm. They arrested me. Is this a game you're playing? <laughs> Tula, you believe that a lucky object can bring good fortune now, don't you? Well, yeah. And what? Now it's clear. You helped Digit steal Eugenius's lucky screwdriver. Yeah, because you like lucky stuff. Arrest her. Tula, how long do I have to wait? Sipka, you gotta see this! We caught the criminals who stole the screwdriver from the professor! Cool, huh? Just awesome. Let's go, Tula. She stays here, under arrest. Yeah, I got it. Come on, let's go. We're not joking around. Oh, and exactly what proof do you have? What proof do I have? Well, uh... Just what I thought. You have nothing, Fire. She's their partner, of course! Nolik, arrest her at once! What did she do wrong? It's insane! Now do what I said! I won't do it! Ah, you're with them! Stand with the crooks over there! Hey, we're partners, aren't we? Now wait a second! I'm wondering if you were the thief! Me? Yes! Right! It's not me, I swear! I'm a detective! Ah, Nolik, please tell him! 
You put it away? In the warehouse? Oh, Elisa, I've told you a hundred times. Please, don't touch my mess. Uh, appears I was a bit off track. You'd have been better off looking for the screwdriver, detectives. That's what I told you. All right, we'll look for a new tactic to use on our next case. What do you mean on your next case? Where's my lucky soldering iron? So, Detective Nolik, shall we begin? <laughs> Water. Hi, I'm all ready. Nolik, he's gonna stay home like we agreed. Uh-huh, see you soon. Who is that? Nolik, it's you. I, I gotta go. I'll go with you. No, we've got... We've got an important job. Little kids aren't allowed. Why can't I help you? Because this work is very demanding. Only it's boring. And you're impatient, so you'll bother us. Huh? But I am patientist. Patient, son? I mean, patient. Like, totally patient. Prove it, then. How? See that, um, uh, water filter. You have to count how many glasses of water it cleans. How many do I need to count? If you can reach a hundred, I'll believe you're patient. Why do they need that filter? Why don't I just drink water out of the sink? Don't worry about it. You need to be counting. That was one. Without water, life is not possible. The human body is made up of two-thirds water, and people need to drink it all the time, but only when it's clean water. Water is transported from rivers and lakes into houses through pipes. Along the way, it gets cleaned of debris and dirt. But even so, this water might still contain toxic substances or harmful microbes. That's why people use filters to clean water for drinking. No bad stuff can get through this last line of defense. saying that I'm skin and bones. There you go. That's why you need to drink water. Drink some more. And some more. Come on, come on. That's all. I ran out of room. You have to have plenty of room left. Why do you care about how much water I'm drinking? Because I got to count how much water is going through the filter? I really gotta. Yeah, and what? It's gotta go through me for you to count it? I'm totally full. What am I supposed to do? I've been waiting here in the kitchen all day, but nobody's drinking. What's going on? <gasps> the filter is broken. You gotta call Simka right away. 415, 416, 417, 418, 419. Simka, it's an emergency. What? The filter's burning. <laughs> You're really funny, Nolik. Simka, he's not choking. Something's going on over there. We gotta hurry. Where's the emergency? Look! So, what's going on here? Great. Now we're stuck fixing the filter. It's not broken. The flashing red light is an indicator. It means it's time to replace the cartridge in the filter. Since ancient times, people have been coming up with ways to remember things or to not mix things up. Knots on ropes were used as reminders that it was time to pay back a debt or reap a harvest. People would cut notches into trees to help remember numbers. Later, people invented the abacus, calendars, and day planners. And now things are even easier because devices can give us reminders. Alarm clocks help people get up on time. A loud oven timer can save a pie from burning. The green light of an indicator shows that a device is turned on and ready to be used. 
A red light shows the opposite. <laughs> Today, smart appliances can tell their owners what they need to do. Without them, humans can be so absent-minded. Mm -hmm. Cartridge is enough for another 2,000 glasses. 2,000? And what do I do about this? Whoa. <laughs> All right, Nolik, you've done a good job there. Way to go. Yeah? If you want, I can do it. Tom Thomas, want some water to drink? Uh-uh. I can't drink anymore. And I can't wait anymore either. <laughs> well, looks like his indicator is flashing on now. <laughs> <laughs> Nolik, let's split up! <laughs> We're one cool team, am I right? Nah. Why not? We're the mega super duper coolest team on the planet! What do you say we do everything together? And never ever fight with each other! All right! Children, if you look right here, you can see that the handle has broken off the professor's favorite mug. And it's our duty to fix it by gluing it back on. <laughs> here they are, the inseparable friends. <laughs> yes, quiet down. Since the two of you were late today, why don't you go fly over to the warehouse for us and get the glue? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> they crack me up. <laughs> Is there any glue left in there? <laughs> Nolik, try jumping on the tube a little. Ay, 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 ay. Uh -huh. Great, there's plenty. Our super duper team has done some super excellent work. What's going on? Our hands are stuck. We gotta pull. <laughs> ay, ay, this glue is sticky. With the help of glue, you can stick almost anything together. Paper, plastic, glass, rubber, wood, and even metal. The reason that glue works is because everything, even an ordinary sheet of paper, has a rough surface. Just look at those pits and ridges. If we take two sheets of paper, fill those pits with glue, and press them together, the molecules of the glue will start joining with one another. After that, all that's left is for the glue to dry. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Everyone will laugh at how funny we are. <sighs> Heads up, everybody! <gasps> Mission complete! Well done. Take your places. And put your hands on your desk. We can't do that. We got glued together. <laughs> it's all right. Come on over here. We don't want you to take our hands apart. We're sure this glue's going to make our friendship stronger, right? <laughs> you really think friendship can be measured like that? <laughs> Jump! One, two, three, yeah! Tish! Tish! <laughs> Come on, I need to go over there. Well, I need to go over there. Uh, 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 uh. It's your fault we got into this mess. Mine? And who was the one that told me to jump? Enough! I'm done with your nonsense. From now on, you're not my friend. And you're not mine, all right? Like many of the common substances people use, glue was invented by nature itself. For example, fish glue their eggs together, and mollusks produce a sticky liquid that lets them stick to any surface. 
A spider smears glue on its web. A swift uses saliva to bind its nest, while caterpillars use their saliva to spin their cocoons. The sap from a pine or a birch tree is glue, and an egg sticky whites can be used as a base for glue. But today, most of the glues that people use are made in factories. When working with glue, it's important to air out the room from harmful fumes and to follow all other safety instructions. And try not to get glued to anything. It might be very hard to tear yourself away from it. Nolik, hang on! <laughs> How come we got unstuck? Maybe it was bad glue? No, we were trying to get you disattached for so long that the glue lost the adhesive properties it had. And our friendship? Did it also lose its properties? You know what, Nolik? I'm sorry. We don't need glue to make our friendship stronger. Peace. Peace. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> gotcha. Plastic. Chuggy! Chuggy, go! Keep Chun, going! Tons. Faster! You can do it! Faster! Chun, come on! Chug, chug! Oh, chug, chug, chug! You're go, almost go. there! Kiddies, that was one fast time. If you could just keep up your training, you could beat the record! <sighs> yes, yes, you're right. Time to take matters into our own hands. Please hold on. Tom Thomas, did you take out the trash? Uh, I didn't have time yet. Good, that's just what I wanted to hear. Uh, and that bottle on your desk, do you need it? That's great, thanks. I've got five more of them. And this is only the beginning of our mission. Operation Rescue. What is your dad up to? Operation Rescue? Could be... Your dad might be a superhero. Do you think? <laughs> no, like, you're too funny for words. What's so funny about that? Who else would be taking part in rescue operations? <laughs> and those bottles, you think he needs them for heroic deeds? Or maybe he decided that it's time to sort your plastic waste. Do, Do what? what? Plastic is a durable and practical man-made material. Lots of useful things are made out of it. Packaging, toys, appliances, and even furniture. But you shouldn't just throw out things that are made of plastic. Nature can't digest it, and so all that plastic will leave the Earth covered with a thick layer of trash. To avoid that catastrophe, we all can help. Put plastic into specially marked containers, and then instead of harming the planet, it can be turned into something useful. No, that doesn't make any sense. Simka, superheroes do not collect trash. And we'll prove it, you'll see. Of course. It's our evolution. I mean, a revolution. Together, we'll save planet Earth. You're so lucky, Tom Thomas. Together, we'll save planet Earth. Thomas, do you have any more plastic in your room here that I can take? One second. You still use those things. For such a noble mission, it's not a problem. All our useful things should be taken care of. Dad, I really want to do it with you. Want to do what? What you're doing. You know, the operation about saving the planet, like you said on the phone. Ah, you mean sorting out the plastic, don't you? Sure. I've got a couple of these boxes filled up already. Will you help me take them to get recycled? Really? What for? Just dump it out with the trash. Son, if we don't start doing what we can to recycle, I'm afraid our planet <sighs> will become one big dump. There's lots of stuff that humans just throw out that can be transformed into something totally different. Uh -uh. 
For instance, an ordinary plastic bottle can be turned into a ballpoint pen, or a watch, or a chair, or dishes, or even some clothing. For example, there are some factories where old plastic is sorted, ground into pieces and cleaned, and then stretched into thread that can be used to make brand new clothing. Isn't that fantastic? But this is only possible if people learn to collect and dispose of unneeded bottles, bags, cups, and other plastic separately from the rest of their trash. Imagine how happy nature will be when the piles and piles of plastic disappear from our woods and from our seas. Let's take care of our planet together. I thought you were trying to rescue the planet, like a superhero. Actually, we are superheroes, and we're also a bit like magicians. Really? Give me a second. See this shirt here? It's made out of recycled plastic like that. Cool, right? No joke! So, you ready? Then it's time to go. Uh, those lucky humans with their trash to sort, and we? We fixies do all that we can to make appliances live longer. That way they don't get thrown away. And we should sort our trash as well. That's a good idea. The spider. Chusaka, Chusaka. Tom Thomas, what are you doing? I'm petting Chusaka. How come? Because huh? it makes her feel good. Just don't rub her fur off. <laughs> You're just jealous, guys, because you don't have any pets of your own. What do you mean? We've got a pet. Yoo-hoo, Buggy! Buggy! She was in the vent the last time I saw her. Hmm. Buggy! Come on out. We need to talk. Here, this is our friend, Buggy. Wait, this insect is really your pet? Ha! <laughs> what a joke. Buggy's a spider. She's not an insect at all. But isn't a spider a kind of insect? <laughs> is the term used for mosquitoes, flies, beetles, dragonflies, butterflies, ants, and many others. Spiders certainly look a lot like insects. They have very similar legs. But spiders aren't insects. They're arachnids. Insects have six legs, while spiders have eight of them. Many insects can fly, but spiders can't. But spiders can weave spider webs. They may look beautiful, but really they are traps for hunting insects. How come your buggy has five legs instead of eight of them? I don't know. <laughs> she lost them somehow. Anyhow, she can do lots of tricks. Hello, buggy. How do you do? We know how to do that trick. Chusaka, shake. Just see that? And I bet your buggy can't do this. Chusaka, sit. Buggy, sit. Why aren't you sitting? Lie down. Your turn. Lie down. Watch me. Like this. Lie down. She can't do that trick. Her fifth leg must be in the way. Lie down. Lie down, I told you. What, what kind of pet are you anyway? You can't even do a simple trick. Hey, where are you going? Wait, Buggy, don't go. No, like you should be ashamed of yourself. But why is she acting? So stupid. <gasps> Didn't you say that she was your friend? And what? Well, you shouldn't yell at your friends like that. She's right. What kind of friend are you? I'll go find her. And apologize. Buggy! Do you hear me?
people like having pets to live with them in their homes. Dogs, cats, hamsters, parrots, fish, turtles. Some folks even get crocodiles. And the bigger the animal, the more work it takes to take proper care of it. But every pet needs love and care, no matter what size it is. Fixies like to have pets, too. All sorts of little bugs, spiders, and flies. Fixies treat them as friends and take care of them. Of course, a little spider isn't as smart as a dog, but they also can be trained. There are some Fixies who have managed to domesticate such big insects as bees, beetles, and dragonflies. Fixies fly on their backs and use them to carry heavy loads. That's it. I'm stuck all alone in here. Forever. Simka? Oh, how did you find me? Buggy let me down here. Buggy, you didn't ditch me. I'm sorry. I promise I'll never ever yell at you again. Ow, my leg. Hang in there, Nolik. We'll get you out. It was so scary. You could have died down there. Yeah, I almost died. But you know what? Buggy saved me. Yeah, that's cooler than learning how to shake hands. Buggy sure is a true friend indeed. Does your leg really hurt a lot? Ah! <gasps> <laughs> nah, it doesn't really hurt. I'm fine. I was just joking. The telescope. <gasps> Ooh, Buggy, <laughs> that was scary. Is Nolik with you? He said he was gonna help us out. <sighs> Beautiful. Whoa, just look at all those stars. It's just like magic, this telescope. Splendid. The simplest telescope is a tube with two lenses. They gather and refract light. We look through a telescope at a faraway moon and see craters, mountains, and crevices on its surface as if they are very close. A telescope helps us examine stars and comets, distinguish the colors and shapes of planets, and find their moons. But it's only possible to look at the sun through a telescope if it has a special filter to protect your eyes from getting damaged. But what's really cool is that it spins! <laughs> no, really! Well, should we get going? Aren't we waiting for Nolik? He'll catch up. I'm gonna leave him a note. Nolik, we're in the computer. Our sun is a small planet called Mercury. 
then comes the planet Venus, then our Earth, then Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, the furthest planet. Is it possible that life only exists on Earth? So far, not even living bacteria has been found on any of the other planets, let alone human life. But we'd like to believe that deep in space, someone is looking through a telescope, and just like us, dreaming of finding their outer space brethren. Come on out, Fixie Eater. We're gonna need to use live bait. Where are you gonna get it from? It's me? Nolik, he knows you already. Don't be afraid. We won't let him hurt you. There's no way. Fixie Eater, come out right now. Ah! I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of you. But barely. Did you see the monster? Look at those jaws! Just like the monster! Nolik, show us where you saw the fixie eater. Up there! I saw him through the telescope! Buggy, could you please go up to that corner over there? Uh-huh. And now yawn. <laughs> Take a look. Buggy, what do you think? The time machine. Oh, wow! What kind of device is that? Maybe an alarm clock? No, this is a time machine! Beep, 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 beep! Time machines, they don't exist. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what a shame. I learned you, that, you, studied you, that. You, you, well you, done, Tula. You, 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 oh. I just bump into. What do you mean, what? Into a time machine. But I thought time machines aren't for real. Of course they are. You get in and take off for the future. Or the past. Splendid. Lots of us would love to be able to travel in a time machine. Maybe to go back in time and fix a bad grade. Or to get a peek into the future. Of course it would be interesting. But time travel isn't possible. And thank goodness. Just imagine how mixed up everything could get. Someone brings back a dinosaur from the past, while someone else brings aliens from the future. No one would need to invent anything. Appliances would sit unused, and fixies would have no work to do. It's awful! So you've got no idea of the answer. I studied this, but I don't remember. Too bad, because tomorrow we've got a hard test. Make sure you're prepared. I'm sure I'm gonna fail. You're gonna pass? You studied all of this, right? So? So you just need to stop worrying so much, that's all. I wish I could. <laughs> Poor girl. How can we help her? Hey, I know how. This morning, Tula believed that that thing over there is a real time machine. Sounds like an anti-scientific plan. Stop worrying. It's simple. We'll send you to tomorrow. You'll sit down, take the test, and come right back here. I wish I could go. It's like a dress rehearsal. The main thing's not to worry. Then what do I do? Uh, you just pull on that wire and you'll get them back. Well, time to go. <laughs> wow, it's tomorrow. Hi there. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Grandpus got sick, so I'll be giving you your tests. I'm scared. Don't worry. It's just a rehearsal. Well then, who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! Oh, so cool! Awesome! That wasn't scary at all. Impressive! By the way, what's wrong with the professor? Uh, Grandpus! Uh, you know, don't you? A bolt fell on his head. You dropped it, remember? I did? Yeah, yesterday. I'm not sure I like this future. Uh -huh. 
Well, how did it go there? Later. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Oh! Leave this on until tomorrow. What is this? Come back! No! If I do, I could hurt you! Me? What for? Wouldn't it be incredible to travel into the future and see what you will become? Unfortunately, that's only possible in our dreams. But if you have a dream and aren't afraid of challenges and setbacks, your future can turn out just the way you imagined. Do you want to become a champion? Then you need to start your training right away! Do you dream of becoming the best programmer in the world? Then first pull up that grade in math class! Do you dream of sailing the oceans? Then you'll need to do a lot of reading because a captain has so much he needs to learn. Start creating your future right now. And we Fixies will be right there to help you, making sure the machines you need to reach your dreams will keep on working for years and years to come. Hey there, are you ready? Uh-huh. So far, everything's exactly the same. Tula, take this, please. It worked. And pass out the tests. You may begin. These questions are different. Who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! What am I worried about? I know everything is going to be fine. Tish! Oh, uh, well then. All of your test results are great. <sighs> Only none of you could guess what this device is. What do you mean? Isn't it a time machine? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's for <laughs> automatically watering plants, that's all. You see? Right? Wow, it's fantastic. So hang on. You guys tricked me? But you passed the test, right? Well, all right. Then I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> the window. Oh, hi there. We're all up. Oh, what are you doing? I'm washing our windows. Uh, it looks like that thing's doing the washing. You guessed it. It's a window washing robot. I borrowed it from a neighbor to try it out. We should buy one for ourselves. I don't get it. We've already got one robot. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, robot. So we'll have two. One for the floors and one for windows. I could clean the windows. But it can be dangerous work. <laughs> What's so dangerous about it? I'll just go and wash them right now. And instead of a robot, we'll buy something uh, useful. Like a skateboard for a boy. I've already got one. So you'll have two. Class. Uh-huh, if you say so. There just so happens to be a dirty window in your office. Let's see how you do with that one. Consider it done. Mm-hmm, and we'll clean the tiles with the robot. A window is much more than just a hole in the wall. Windows provide houses with light, ventilation, and views to the world outside. Modern windows are made with several layers of glass. Between each layer is a space that's filled with air. The air works as insulation to keep heat from escaping outside. Do you know how to tell how many layers of glass your window has? Just shine a flashlight at it. The number of reflections tells you the number of layers. Whoa! What an amazing appliance! Let's go and take a closer look. You really buy me a new skateboard, Dad? That's what I said, but first, I've got a window to wipe. All right, robot, we'll show you. Tom Thomas, Dad can show him himself. <laughs> we really live on a super high floor. Yeah, but the robot isn't afraid of heights. <sighs> I'll start from this corner. It'll take you forever that way. Admit it, the robot works better. We won't. We're gonna win this thing. Hey, what is he doing? I'm not sure. Huh? Mom! Mom! The robot made such a mess in there! It's impossible. Look! <laughs> Good joke. 
Just wait. Get how you're cleaning it. Easy. You can talk? You gotta be kidding. And you are misbehaving. You guys? You're the ones trying to stop me? You tried to make the robot look bad, so we had to defend it. It's only because my dad told me I'd get a skateboard. Yeah? For doing a bad thing? Ah, oh, aren't you ashamed of yourself? I am. You learned your lesson, and don't forget, Fixies look out for appliances. The dwellings of most ancient people had basically no windows at all. There may have been a hole up above for letting out smoke from a fire, but that was it. Later, people started splitting open their walls, but the openings were so small that very little light would ever get inside. The size of windows grew quite a bit over time. People would cover them with animal skins, fabric, paper, or wooden planks to protect themselves from the cold and the wind. When people learned how to mine valuable minerals, they began to cover window openings with thin sheets of a mineral called mica. Windows made of glass were very expensive, and only the richest people could afford them for their homes. But today, it's hard to imagine a window anywhere not covered in glass. <sighs> Everything's washed. And what about the outside? Forget it. I... I quit. Would you wash the back with the robot? Yeah, consider it done. Yeah, you're right. I see. It really is a great appliance. And that washer's defender is even better. You're right about that. Tish! The movie. He fakes left. He shoots. Huh. Class! And can you do it backwards? Yeah, sure. Huh. <gasps> no way! What a shot! Huh. I wish Simka could see this. Why don't we make a movie for Simka about fire? We can use my fixie tub. It's got a camera. How come it's only for Simka? We'll make it for all of us. That's a great idea. I'll shoot the ball at the basket, and Nolik will do the filming. And what do we do? You can be whatever you want, like cheerleaders or the coaches. Yeah, a cheerleader. Help me in. Motion pictures, or movies, appeared more than 100 years ago after the invention of celluloid film. A movie is made up of a series of still photographs called frames. When you look at the frames quickly, one after another, the picture on the screen appears to move. It's hard to believe, but the first viewers got very scared when they saw a moving train on the screen. <laughs> At first, films were silent. Only later did people learn to make them with sound. And soon after that, people learned to make movies in full beautiful color. Movies aren't shot on film anymore. They're made with digital cameras. Today, almost all phones and tablets come with digital cameras inside of them. This makes it easy for just about anybody to make their own movie and share it with their friends. Fire is the best. Ooh, he can shoot the best. Hey, I haven't turned the camera on yet. Get ready. Here we go. Show me. Yep. Fire is the best. And where's the ball? It flew over there. That's not right. You have to see the ball flying in the picture. I got it. Get ready. Uh. Fire is the best. How was that? It worked. I got it. Fire is the best. And where am I? You're somewhere over there. And we aren't there. Why did you have us cheering? Nolik, you need to make sure we're all in the shot. Okay, I'll try.
shots and you do the filming. Fire can't even hit the basket. You try to hit the basket when everybody's bothering you. Oh, so it's our fault, hmm? Why don't you learn how to play? Are you fighting again? <laughs> We're shooting a film. Whoa! Can I see it? There's nothing for you to see. All I have is pieces. And not one is right. Don't worry. It's no problem. All it needs is editing. What does it need? <laughs> Movies are not usually shot all at once, just a piece at a time. And each of these pieces can be shot several times with the camera in different places. Then there's plenty to choose from. After you're done shooting, you can take all of the best shots and put them one after another to make your movie. This process is called editing. Editing allows us to make movies that show things that could be impossible to shoot all at once. Well, let's see. For this first shot, we've got this cake over here. For the ball going in, we've got this one. And I like this one of me shooting. And don't forget to put in me and Tula. Of course not. So here's what we've got. Fire in the best. Oh, geez. The film is super. Can I try to edit it? Yeah, go ahead. Now we have something to show to our teacher. And Digit, too. <laughs> and Papus and Masia. Look, I did my own editing in the movie. What was that? That's not true. It is so. With editing, it's just not fair, Nolik. Fire was able to put it in a hundred times without any editing. You sure didn't. Hey, guys, don't fight. Do you want me to teach you all the right way to shoot hoops? Yeah! All right, here we go. And shoot! Fire is the best! Oh, we can shoot the best! <laughs> the heart. Where's my pecumet? It's not here either. I think my head's got a screw loose. Oh! Tom Thomas, why are you throwing your stuff around? Oh, because I got a real problem. What is it? I can't decide which club I should pick. Johnny signed up for robotics, and Katya's gonna be in chess. You call that a problem? Go with Johnny. And why not Katya? Uh, uh, uh. Then go with chess. But they don't have robots. My mom told me I should listen to my heart. Do you know how to do that? <laughs> I found it! See you! Gotta go! Nolik! Simka can tell you! She knows everything! The heart is the main pump of a living organism. It's a unique muscular organ with a multitude of blood vessels attached to it. The main function of the heart is to continuously move blood throughout the body. The human heart pumps about six liters of blood every minute even though this pump is not that large. Make a fist. Your heart is about the same size as that. To make sure your heart stays healthy, you need to strengthen it with plenty of exercise and a healthy diet. Nolik, please come help me. Why me? Tool is stronger. Huh? Interesting. And do you know what is meant by the word heartlessness? Well, I think it's, uh, some kind of human illness. May I? Tula. Heartlessness is when a human or a fixie leaves someone who has a problem behind. Yeah. Huh? I... Yeah. <sighs> Thank you very much, young man. Uh, I mean young fixie. Heartlessness, does it last forever? Of course not. We just need to help one another more often. Uh-huh. Uh, uh. Ah! Tom Thomas, my friend! Here I am. How are you? How am I? Why do you care? Oh, by the way, I found out how you can listen to your heart. You need this tube. It's called a stethoscope. A stethoscope, but I don't have one. That's what I'm for. <laughs> the thing is way too tiny. 
Hmm. Ah, your mom must have one. Oh, yeah. Well? It's beating. Loudly. And what is it saying to you? Not a word. And now? It's beating. <coughs> huh? What was that? <coughs> This is just absurd. A heart can't talk. You know what? Why don't you just try again? Tom Thomas. <gasps> Who is that? It's your heart talking. Boom, boom. Can you hear me? Uh-huh. I believe that robotics is right for you. Uh... And what about chess? Who cares about chess? Robots are way cooler. This voice reminds me of someone. Heh, <laughs> so that's what you look like, my itty bitty heart. Well, I did it from the bottom of my heart. When a human is at rest, his heart beats between 60 and 100 times per minute. This rhythm is called the pulse rate. Place two fingers on your wrist or your neck. Can you hear it? Boom, 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 boom. You can count the beats. When you're sleeping, your pulse slows down. But when you get excited, run, or get worried or afraid, your heart begins to beat faster and pumps the blood harder. Sometimes it feels like it's beating so fast that people say, oh, my heart is going to jump out of my chest. But don't be afraid, it's not going anywhere. And when people say, listen to your heart, they don't mean that your heart can talk. It means that you should trust yourself and listen to your feelings. And then you'll definitely find the answer you're looking for. Looks like at the end of the day, I'm heartless. I couldn't help my friend at all. No, Lick, but you helped. You really did. I finally figured out which club I want to join. Robotics, like I told you? Not that. I want to learn medicine. Money. Hello? Uh-huh. Fire, can you help me, please? Sorry, Verda. I need to go to, uh, the warehouse right away. But I helped you yesterday, didn't I? Well, I helped you the day before that. Yeah, well, what about last week? I helped you three times, remember? Well, I... Uh... You helped one another when it was time to. I don't see why you have to count. Of course not, Tula. You ask for the most help from all of us. I do not, Verda. Look how Elisa helps Professor the genius. And she doesn't argue with him. Of course not. She's in love with the professor. Actually, it's her job. And for helping the professor, she gets money. Hmm, money. That's a smart idea. <laughs> money constantly moves from one hand to another. A person does his job at work, and in exchange, he gets money for it. He can use the money to buy things he wants, like clothing or food. Or he can pay somebody else for their work. Like getting a ride from a taxi driver, a haircut from a hairdresser, or a computer repaired by a technician. All people take part in this circulation of money. But unlike people, fixies don't use any money. We do just fine without it. From now on, we'll do it like people do it. If you work for somebody, they give you money for it. And if you need some help, then you pay. And that'll stop the arguing. And all the false accusations. And those are for Simka and Dolan. Now it's all fair. supposed to do with it? You don't know. You pay for someone to help you. I don't like this new idea at all. At all.
Maybe we should give them our money so they'll stop arguing. I've got a cooler idea. Hey, who needs money around here? Because we've got it. Now there's enough for everybody. Where are you? We're in here. Your fault, Fire. And your fault. No, it's the money. That's whose fault it is. He's right. That's why we were fighting. And we didn't even fix the printer. Money is nothing more than just paper. <sighs> Although money is printed in strict secrecy, we still know something about the process. The paper used for money is made out of cotton and linen. It's stronger than normal paper made out of wood, which means it doesn't rip as easily, even if you fold it thousands of times. The ink used for printing money is special, too. It won't rub off the paper or fade in the sun. And that's not all. The ink has secret additives that can only be seen if you look at the money under a special light. This helps protect people from fake money. It is for the same reason that watermarks, metal strings, and teeny tiny writing is also used on money. This writing's very hard to read, unless you happen to be a fixie. I hope I didn't say more than I should have. Well, all done. It's time for a test. But what are we going to print? A word with real value. Yeah, something really precious. No, it's not money. Right, it's so much better. Friendship! Tish! The virus. Tom Thomas! Pass him on the turn! Good job! You're almost there! Now put the pedal to the metal! Johnny, you lose. You want to race him again? We can. We just finished the last level. Oh, we were just getting started. Wait a second. Let's see what it says here. Congratulations. Your prize is a smartphone and a collection of brand new levels to race. All right. Class, click on it. It's not smart to just click on random buttons. Hmm. There's nothing to worry about. Whoa. Hey, what's going on? Someone messed with the numbers. There you go. Didn't I warn you guys? Do you think it might have been Johnny? Johnny! Of course! He got upset that we won, so he put on the cap of invisibility. Then he snuck into the room and deleted everything from the computer. Stop! What are you talking about? A cap of invisibility. This has nothing to do with Johnny at all. Looks like you got a virus. Then we need to get Tom Thomas's mom in here. What for? Isn't it obvious? She's a doctor. She'll get rid of this virus in no time. That won't work. Quit it. A computer with a virus isn't treated like that. A doctor won't be able to help here, especially a dentist like your mother. Then who can help us? You need special software for that. Antivirus! A computer virus is a destructive computer program. It can not only delete or steal important information, but completely destroy your computer. And the scariest thing about this virus is that it spreads very quickly and can infect the other computers on the network, very much like a human illness. To find and stop these viruses, you need to use an antivirus program. Antivirus programs also protect computers against new infections. And by the way, your dad's computer uses antivirus software. And mine doesn't have it? No, you won't let anyone near your computer. You never have any time. Dad, let's do it later, okay? I've got to finish one more round. It'll only take a minute. Oh, look at Dad. The virus is starting to wipe out everything now. That means this computer will disappear. And this room, too. And... and all of us. Stop! Stop! Quit panicking.
thing. We have to save the computer right away. Tom Thomas, your dad has a box with antivirus software. Bring it. Games, music, cartoons. There are so many interesting things on the internet, but just like in the physical world, you have to follow some rules when you're online. First, you should only visit websites that you know. Sometimes a destructive virus could be hiding behind a pretty picture, and there are plenty of scammers on the internet. That's why you should never give anybody you don't know well your address or send an SMS so you can download a free game. If you happen to get a letter or a text from a stranger, you should show it to your parents right away. Only communicate with people that you know. And don't just sit all day playing on the internet. There's still nothing better than going outside and playing with friends in the fresh air. Software. How come? There's no need. No, we have to. That program should only be installed by an adult. Otherwise, your parents will figure out you got help from Fixies. Sorry about that. All done. And here comes my dad. Dad, will you install this on my computer, please? You need it right away? How about a bit later? No, we can't keep putting it off. There you go. Now your computer is protected. How come you became so responsible all of a sudden? Oh, Dad, you don't know what kind of viruses are out there roaming the net. You're so right. The Jewel. Tom Thomas, it's time to eat. Where did it go? Chusaka. Did you see this tiny little... I can't believe now I'm asking a dog. Tom Thomas, are you looking for us? Hey, Fixies, maybe you can help me. One of these stones is missing. And so? And so, this pin is very valuable. And so's the stone. If I don't find the stone soon, it's going to be the end. Honey, your lunch is getting cold. There's no reason to panic. Your precious stone will be found. Wait a sec. Can stones really be precious? Of course they can. Gemstones are the most rare and beautiful of all stones, but it's not easy to find them. Diamonds, emeralds, rubies, sapphires, people find them underground and inside of mountains. Brave divers go to the bottom of the sea to find pearls. People have performed heroic acts and committed daring crimes to get these precious jewels. The magical shine of gems can both enchant and ruin. Remember, only gems acquired honestly bring happiness. I can't find it anywhere. Maybe Chusaka took it. She saw that it was valuable and... Oh. You're right. Chusaka? Give us back the gem, all right? Give it back, we said. Why are you making Chusaka angry? Because she has to give the stone back. What stone, Simka? One that calls a ton. Dogs are supposed to keep treasure safe, but this one eats them. Maybe you didn't look carefully. For example, did you check inside that flower pot? <laughs> this digging's just a waste. How could it end up in here? Because I know this is where we left it. Oh, is that so? All right, spit it out. Look at this! A diamond! <gasps> this will look absolutely perfect on my back -a mat But I was the one that found it. It will look perfect on mine, too. Let's bring our pack -a mats and try it on them. We'll put it here for safekeeping. Well, who could have taken it? <laughs> we still need to check inside of Chusaka! <laughs> You gotta be joking. She'll eat you up. <gasps> Where are you going, huh? Inside Chusaka to get the stone out. No, like, don't, please. <laughs> I'm ready to do anything my friend needs me to. Huh? 
by any chance. Are you looking for this? Huh? <gasps> Where in the world did you find it? I found a buried diamond. It looks like a diamond, but to be sure, we'll have to conduct a test. A raw diamond looks like an ordinary stone. But after cutting and polishing each of its facets, that special stone transforms into a rare and very expensive jewel that can adorn a necklace, a crown, or a museum's display case. The truth is, only a small part of all found diamonds is used for jewelry. It's because a diamond is also the hardest rock on the planet. That makes it perfect for cutting glass. Diamonds are used in making strong drill bits and cutting blades. Many important medical instruments could not be made without them. With the help of diamonds, it's even possible to drill through a mountain when building a tunnel. That's just how valuable diamonds are. They can cut a pipe and go well with a dress. Isn't it pretty? Only it's not a... Tom Thomas! We found a star! Oh, oh. And now it's gone. <sighs> to suck a degree! Oi, oi. Thanks so much, Fixies! I was sure my precious present was gone. And who is the present for? Katya, I think she'll like it. Now I've got to tell you, Tom Thomas, that's not a precious stone. You got nothing but glass there. I know. But it doesn't matter. What? I was risking my life for the sake of a piece of glass? First, it was for the sake of your friend. And second, the cost of the gift doesn't matter. It's only the thought that counts. The blood test. Yeah. Ha! Oh, yeah. Mom! Hi, Tom Thomas. Huh? What are you fighting with flies? No. Dad signed me up for a class. I'm starting to learn martial arts. Are you gonna fight like in the movies? What do you mean? I'm gonna star in the movies. I'm gonna play a superhero. Yeah. Ah! Ah! He'd be a great windmill for sure. <laughs> Tom Thomas. Is first period free for you tomorrow? Yeah. Excellent. Then in the morning, I can take you in for a blood test. A blood test? Why do I need that? To make sure that you're healthy for your martial arts class. And remember, don't eat anything before the test. Don't worry, it's just a little needle. A little what? Mom! And what if I take some other kind of sport, like chess, for instance? Then... I don't need a blood test. What's up? Are you scared? No. Mwah. I'm proud of you. Dad never told me I need a blood test. It looks like our superhero is a little scared. I think I'd be too. Blood sounds scary. Nothing scary about it. A human body has a huge number of little tubes called blood vessels with blood flowing through them. The blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the cells, takes away carbon dioxide from them, and protects them from harmful microbes. To be sure if you're healthy or not, it's often necessary to have a blood test. The most accurate results come from blood that is taken from a vein. The sample is analyzed to see if everything is all right, and if not, the doctor will prescribe a treatment. You see, it's totally safe. And there's nothing scary about it. Mm-hmm. Oh. Blood should only be drawn on an empty stomach. What's that mean? It means no eating before the test. And what happens if I eat? Well, then they won't take any blood from you. Hmm. That's an idea. What's an idea? Um, I got no idea. Okay. Good night. You're really not scared at all? Mm-mm. For some reason, I don't believe him. Ah? Uh, huh? Hey, what's going on? You're not allowed to eat! Give it back! Hmm. Oh, my mom's coming! 
going. <laughs> oh. Tom Thomas, did you forget? You're not allowed to eat now. Do I have to have this test? Go on. Go get yourself ready. Are you trying to run away? Shh. I thought you wanted to be a superhero. You're being nothing but a coward. I'm not a coward. You are. I'm not. You're acting like one. Anyhow, I'm not going there. Don't even think about it. Nolik, help! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Ready to go? All right, Tom Thomas, get up. It's time. Well, thanks a lot. And from now on, we're not friends. Making an accurate blood analysis is not a simple task. Originally, this work was done by people that would examine a drop of blood under a microscope. Today, in modern laboratories, technicians analyze blood with the help of smart analyzing machines. These machines can do the job much faster, and they don't make mistakes like people can. After you give some blood to be analyzed, the test tube is sent on a real journey to reach the laboratory for analysis. In the laboratory, it moves from one analyzer to another, each one of them examining a different part of your blood. Then, all of the data is put together, and that's it. The blood test is done. You can get an email when the report is ready and check the results online, so you don't even have to go out to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, huh? Thanks to you, we just lost our friend. It's because he was being a coward. And if it's my fault at all, it's only a little bit. Fixies! Are you here? We're here. Look what I've got! A certificate for bravery! You had the blood test! And you weren't scared? Uh-uh! Look! Way to go! So, are we friends again? Of course we are! All right! Then can you teach me a few of those moves? Yeah, sure! Wow! The dishwasher. Can't catch me. You won't catch me. <laughs> Enjoying yourself without a care in the world. What? We have more care to both of you together. Yeah, anyone can see that. Wanna bet me? How about we try doing your job and you try doing ours? And whoever loses has got to grant the other's wish. We have a dishwasher here in the kitchen that isn't working, and you're distracting us with your nonsense. Wait a sec. Let's do it. Find the broken part. Good as done. Find it where? <laughs> you're the adults now. Go and find it. Just look out for yourselves. And you kids, time for school. And I better not hear that you were misbehaving. Was I there when they taught us about dishwashers at school? <laughs> the main element of a dishwashing machine is this part called the sprayer which looks like a propeller. After the dishwasher's pump delivers water, it is warmed, mixed with detergent, and then pushed up with high pressure. That makes the propeller spin very quickly, so it can shoot out the water with a force strong enough to wash all of the dirt off the plates and glasses. But it does it carefully, so that dishes not only come out sparkling, but unbroken as well. Is this a parent-teacher conference? It's not. It's an experiment. For today, I'm Simka. <laughs> and I'm Nolik. All right. Who's ready to tell the rest of the class what we studied yesterday? Simka. Yesterday? Oh. You forgot. Be seated. That's an F. Mm-hmm. I think the problem is in the control panel. I wonder if the dishwasher ran out of water. Ah, uh, Papus, don't argue with your wife. Right? This one is working, and so is this. Wash those dishes. But that would be cheating. 
No one will find out. The dishes will all be nice and clean, and bam, we're the winners. <laughs> Check it out, we are all done. How come the indicators aren't lit? Fixies have to fix things. And what do you call this? And you, did you both go to school today? Of course we did. I, I mean Simka, got an F for her answer. Well, thanks, Marcia. And did you play with Tom Thomas? You know that we don't show ourselves to people. Tom Thomas isn't any human. He's our friend. Either you play with him, or you both lose, just like we did. No way. We'll play another round. The earliest kitchenware appeared about 7,000 years ago. Early people made these containers from stone or wood. Another kind of container for holding food was woven baskets. The baskets would be lined with clay for durability. Once, one of these baskets fell into a bonfire, and lo and behold, the wood on the outside burned away, while the clay was now hard as a rock. That discovery led to the invention of clay pottery that is still in use to this very day. Later on came the development of glass, metal, and cast iron cookware. The world's richest people can even have food served to them on dishes of silver or gold. Today, kitchenware is not only a practical convenience, but it can decorate any home as well. Forget it. This is impossible. Let's just tell them we give up. Zinka, how come this button is crooked and not sticking out? Because the button got jammed! Yeah! No way! You figured out what was wrong! <laughs> Dragging this around. Diddy! One. Papus, two, we fixed everything! Three, really? Does this mean you're playing with him? Four, what? You think we're some quitters? Ha! Five. Then which one of us is the Ready winner? Or not, here I come. Three. Let's call it a draw. Each team gets one wish. Our team mm. wants you to fix my arm. And you finish this game with him. Piece, Piece of cake. cake. The Sith. Dad, what time is Mom getting back from her conference? She'll be back in an hour. What surprise can we make for her? Let's bake her buns with raisins in them. They're her favorite. That's a great idea. Ah, uh, where do we keep our recipe? Huh, they're not here. Where could they be? What are you looking for? <gasps> a recipe. They're in the drawer by the stove, over there. Great, thanks a lot. Here they are. That's fantastic. Let's see. What do we need? Milk. Flour. Eggs. Some cinnamon and raisins. The cinnamon's right there. But you're out of raisins. Uh, we're out of raisins. Can we make them without? No, Mom loves them with raisins. Ah, it's too late. The stores are closed. We got cereal! And so? It has raisins, look! Tom Thomas, you're a genius! Why don't you be in charge of the raisins? Tom Thomas, what does Mom use to knead dough? The mixer. How about the mixer? Hmm, not a bad idea. I don't think you have enough raisins. But you haven't made the dough yet. It'll be really quick with the mixer. All right, Dad, we'll see who finishes first. Come on, faster, faster! If you think you're so good, then why don't you help? Fine, we'll help. <laughs> Catch! What's going on in there? We picked everything off the top. We have to dive down. Then dive. Hurry up. Dad's almost done putting the mixer together. Where are the raisins? It's dark. Down there. We can't see any raisins. Well, try diving again. No, this way won't work. We need a filter. 
In order to separate seeds from the husk, air from dust, and water from harmful particles, we use filters. The simplest kind of filter is a metal netting. These kinds of filters are installed in washing machines and dishwashers. They keep the water clean by capturing small debris and sand. As a result, machines work better and go longer without breaking. In other words, filters help separate what is wanted from what isn't. I think I know what Mom uses. Perfect. That filters a sieve. Grab the bowl and hold the sieve over it. Pour in the cereal. Now shake it so the tiny flakes fall through the sieve and the raisins stay in it. Turning the mixer on. Then you need to shake faster. <laughs> Dad, you're spraying the batter all over the kitchen. The mixer's too powerful. The mixer's fine. The batter's too liquid. You have to add flour. Add flour. Oh, right. How do you know all this? Shake it some more. No need. I shook all the flakes through it. Glass. It really worked. Dad! What? Ready to put in the raisins? Look at you! How did you get them all out so fast? By using our sieve, Dad! Do you know the story about Cinderella? Her evil stepmother wouldn't let her go to the ball. Instead, she poured peas into a sack of cinder and ordered Cinderella to pick them all out. But what most people don't know is that it was Fixies who helped her separate the peas from cinder with the help of a sieve. That's right! Cinderella was friends with the Fixies. You can find evidence of Fixies in a number of tales. Don't Tom Thumb or Thumbelina remind you of somebody? How did these tiny characters make their way into fairy tales? It's quite possible that long ago, a Fixie who wasn't paying attention was spotted by a storyteller. And that became the inspiration for countless tales. All right, you can open your eyes. Ta-da! Beautiful. Whose idea was this? Tom Thomas. Mmm, they're so good. What recipe is this? Tom Thomas found it. And you remembered that I love raisins. Tom Thomas sifted them out of the cereal. Well done, Tom Thomas. All by yourself? Shh. I should say so. Tish! Concrete. When will you be back from your fishing trip? Before dinner. So you won't have time to hang up the mirror again? Hm. If it's not one thing, it's another. Um, we were just planning to hang it right now. Uh, it'll only take us two minutes, and then we'll go fishing. Boggers! Huh? Eh? What do you want, Nolik? When am I gonna go on a fishing trip with you? You know fixies don't go fishing. But you promised me that today. We will go and visit the aquarium. I was only planning on going there to clean it. So let's go fishing while we're at it. We'll pretend. Poppers, please. Okay, Nolik, but we'll just pretend to. Hooray! You're the best poppers ever! Nah, those won't work. Why won't they? Because our walls are concrete. They're much too hard for nails. See that? It's gonna need to be drilled. Hmm, I guess we'll need to use a special drill bit that's right for this wall. Concrete is a very strong building material made out of small stones, sand, cement, and water. When the concrete mixture dries, it becomes very hard, like a solid piece of rock. For building houses, bridges, and other large constructions, reinforced concrete is what people use. To reinforce the concrete, it is poured into a mold with steel bars. When you drill into a reinforced concrete wall, you have to be careful not to hit the metal bars. Papoos! Shh, humans. Mm-mm, 
Not big enough. It won't hold up this mirror. But it's all we've got. <sighs> so we'll have to go and buy another. That stinks. Means there's no time to go fishing now. Actually, I think this will hold it for a little while. <clears throat> that looks great. So, ready? We don't, but we'll figure it out. I really don't like how that mirror's hanging. That's what happens when people are in a rush to finish. We're fixies. We never do things like that. Papoose, we going fishing or not? Yes, we will. After we take care of this mirror. In ancient Rome, volcanoes helped make concrete. After they erupted, people would mix the volcanic ash with stones, lime, and sand. This concrete was used in many of the famous buildings constructed in that time. For instance, the Pantheon with its concrete dome. And this one is the famous Colosseum. It was also made with concrete. The Colosseum is almost 2,000 years old, but it's still standing strong. Later, when that land was conquered by other nations, people forgot about concrete and how to make it. Thank goodness that 200 years ago, they suddenly realized what a great material it is, and they reinvented concrete. It's true when they say, oh, everything new is well forgotten old. Papoose, carry on. Haste is the mother of imperfection. Hmm, it looks like I ran out of wire. Mm, lousy timing. I've got to get to the warehouse. Warehouse? That means we're not going fishing. Nolik, a promise is a promise, and that means we go. Eh, this should hold for a little while. <laughs> it's funny. We almost left without the fishing rods. Don't panic. We did a good job of anchoring. Remember what I said? Haste is the... Yeah. Yeah, I'm not hearing things. Looks like a trip to the store after all. For screws? Yeah, and a brand new mirror. It looks like today's fishing trip's canceled. And ours is too, Nolik. At least the fish will be happy. The exercise machine. Nolik? I'm not here. You haven't seen me today at all. What's up with you? There's gonna be this race and it starts really soon. It's the boys against the girls. Their team against ours. And what? And what? I'm the smallest one on the team. And I'll let everyone down. That's why I'm hiding. Because I don't want my team to lose. You can't just give up. You can learn to run faster if you want. You think? Of course. That's what exercisers are for. You need a treadmill to get stronger. Class! And where can we get one? We'll make it ourselves. Exercise machines were invented so people could work out without going outside. For instance, a treadmill lets you walk or run for a very long time while moving in one place. A treadmill's main part is a conveyor belt that is driven around by an electric motor. Today's smart treadmills have the ability to measure your speed, the distance that you've run, your heart rate, and even the results of previous workouts. There, it's all done. Teesh! It's time to start your first training session. How will I learn to run really fast? If you keep turning it so slowly. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, that's a little too fast. Oh, sorry about that. I got it. That's what you call training. Tom Thomas, 
So, what do you think? Maybe I trained enough? Not yet. You need to keep going. Oh, I can't do this any longer. Let's stop. <sighs> no way! Turn the handle. Yeah! There are all sorts of exercise machines to help you improve your health. This one simulates skiing. It exercises your arms, legs, and heart. And this one you can row like a robo. And if pedaling's your thing, an exercise bike lets you get a great workout, no matter how bad the weather is outside. There are also weight training machines. These machines can help you build big, strong muscles and tone the shape of your body. However, you can still get great exercise without these bulky machines. There are plenty of much simpler devices that you can find room for in any house. Like a chin-up bar for doing pull-ups, a wall-mounted ladder or rope for climbing, or jump ropes, weights, hula hoops, or balls. The important thing is to just exercise. <laughs> okay, girls, <laughs> hold on to your hats. Oh, how scary. We'll show them who's gonna win. Right, Tula? I'm gonna do my best. Tula will definitely beat Nolik. We gotta step it up. It's time to get this race going. Runners, are you ready? I'm ready. ready. On your marks, everyone get set. Go! Go, Come on, Come on, Come on, is greater. Oh, now the girls are gonna win. Nolik will never catch up with Tula. Oh my gosh! Nolik appears to be gaining ground. But look at him! He's looking for your head! Go on, Nolik, go! You got it, buddy! Come on, buddy! Hey, look at him! He's flying! All of that work on the exercise machine really helped! Nolik, where are you going? The finish is there! Thank you, Nolik. You're my hero. Team won the race? We did. It's a tie. Tom Thomas, that's just not fair. It was a tie. And a very noble one. All right, you just wait for the next race. Nolik's gonna win it big time. Now it's time for you all to get up on that winner stand. <coughs> oh no, all the first places are taken. For you, we'll find one. <laughs> the copy. Elisa! Don't worry, I found it. Uh, no, I didn't find it. Elisa! Elisa! I hear you! I'm coming, Professor Eugenius. Have you seen this umbrella anywhere? Looks like the professor lost his umbrella again. <gasps> More than one? Look at all these flyers! No, like, they're all copies of one flyer. Elisa prints lots of them so she can hang them up all over town. A copier is a device for making multiple copies of a single picture or document. An image that needs to be copied is placed on a piece of glass under a lid. The photocopier shines a bright light on it so it can take a clear picture. Then the image is printed onto paper with the help of special ink and a rotating drum. This way, you can make identical copies over and over again from one original until the ink or the paper runs out. What happened, Professor Eugenius? Oh, oh I, my briefcase, I can't find it anywhere. Oh, you're so absent-minded. First it was the umbrella, now it's the briefcase. Oh, is that for me? 
I don't do it on purpose. Well, we'll find your briefcase. I'll go design a new flyer for that, and I'll print those out, too. Ah, I just remembered. Remembered where you left your briefcase? Not that. This morning, I forgot to drink my tea. <laughs> so we need to find your tea as well. It's so dark inside of here. Quiet! Elisa's coming out. We have to hide. Where is that one about the briefcase? Here's the flyer for missing keys, the one for the phone, the flyer for when the professor gets lost. Here, a missing briefcase. Excellent. <laughs> Looks like she's gone for now. And where is Nolik? There's Nolik, in printed form. He got stuck inside the copier. We have to go and save him. Save him? We all need to be saved, Tula. If Elisa takes these flyers and hangs them up, the whole city will find out about Fixies. So what do we do then? Wait, uh... Oh, we can use those liquid erasers to paint over Nolan. Simka, look! Here's another Nolik! Oh, here comes another one. Everybody has the opportunity to enjoy seeing the paintings of the great masters. But thanks to copying technology, these pictures are well known all over the world. Young artists and sculptors can learn their craft by studying and copying the great art line of the past. It's good to have copies of important documents, just in case. What if the original of a document happens to get destroyed? At least, there will be a copy. Copies are generally very helpful, but not all copies are good. Some copies called forgeries are bad. A forgery is a copy of a picture, document, or even money that is presented as the original. Making forged copies is illegal. You can even be sent to jail for making copies like that. And a little bit here. so bright in there. I almost went blind. And we had to take every one of those copies and paint over all of them. So that humans won't find out about Fixies. It's a shame I wasn't there. I could have helped you out with that. Professor! I'm leaving! <sighs> there they are. <laughs> Elisa! <laughs> Elisa! Elisa! She just left to hang up the flyers. Yeah, and I found the briefcase in the umbrella myself. I have to call her and tell her. Uh, 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 where's my phone? Have I really lost it? Don't you worry, Professor. If you can't find it, Elisa's got a flyer for your phone already. <laughs> What's important right now is that Elisa doesn't go missing. <laughs> <laughs> the spray can. Uh-huh. Footprints, just like I suspected. Are those your footprints? Not, Not ours. ours. Then what's on your shoes? What a mess I got into. Pew! <laughs> it's bug <fun> spray! <laughs> Elisa, <clears throat> what a terrible smell. What is it? It's poison. <clears throat> Why do we need poison? I've had this gnawing suspicion for quite a long time that something is living in our laboratory. And so, yesterday, after it got dark, I quietly dusted the table with flour. And so... Look, don't you see? Footprints. And I want to destroy <gasps> them. Destroy who? You really haven't figured it out? Cockroaches live here. A cockroach? That's what she thinks you are. Uh, what makes you sure that it's a cockroach? 
What else could it be? Well, uh, maybe a spider. Hmm. Well, spiders are cute and nice, too. But then where is the spider where? Uh, uh, I don't know. Exactly. It's cockroaches. That stuff is gross. Where's that stuff coming from? It's from an aerosol spray can, Nolik. Aerosol is made of tiny little drops and particles that can hang in the air for quite a long time. Dust, smoke, and fog, they are all aerosols. People learned to make aerosols long ago. For instance, they took a liquid that repels mosquitoes, poured it into a can, and injected some gas into it. Then, when you push the button, the gas forces the liquid to go out through a tiny hole, turning it into a bug spray. That spray will poison the fixies. We have got to stop Elisa. Let's destroy the aerosol can. No way. We just can't do that. And what if we... Switch it with a can of whipped cream. Quit joking. We've got to get Elisa to believe that it's a spider and not cockroaches. She thinks spiders are cute. You're right. Let's go get Buggy. Spray cans have all sorts of different uses. For example, they're very convenient for getting medicine into a sore throat. They can be used to fill the air with the sweet smell of perfume or to cover unpleasant smells with deodorant. Spraying paint from a can is also very useful. It applies the paint very evenly. Some spray cans are even used for food. But there can also be deadly poisons inside of spray cans, like bug killer. So make sure you know which one you're using. And you must always remember how to handle spray cans properly so that nobody gets hurt. You must never open, take apart, or pierce a spray can. And spray cans should never be heated or put next to an open fire because they contain gas that can explode. Right? Would you help us, please? <gasps> there are new tracks here. Well, roaches, prepare to die. Are you ready? Go ahead. Run! <gasps> oh, don't kill Buggy. No! <gasps> you are so cute! What a sweet little spider. Can I be your friend? That worked great. I hope that's the end of her spraying that poison. My little spider, I almost poisoned you. Spider, where are you going? Aren't we friends? Yeah, that's a good idea. You're better off being our friend. Buggy, wait! She's upset. She could have been poisoned and we didn't tell her. I'm sure she'll forgive us if we go and apologize. Fasteners. And of course, all of the appliance's parts must be fastened good and tight. What are you doing, colleague? Today, Lisa is returning from her vacation. And so, I decided before she gets back, I'll clean up the laboratory. Quite a noble initiative. Now, where was I? You were saying all parts have to be fastened. <laughs> You're right. And what kinds of fasteners can you name? Fire? Uh, a screw? Mm-hmm. And what else? Uh, another screw? <laughs> that would make a total of two screws altogether. Simka? To fasten wood or plastic parts together, you can use nails. 
Nails are hammered in with a hammer. In metal or stone, you need to first drill holes for the screws. To help a screw hold better, it can be inserted into a special fastener called an anchor or wall plug. The difference between a machine screw and a wood screw is that wood screws have pointy ends. Machine screws go into holes that already have a thread or into a nut. And what if there aren't any screws or nails around? Well, then a fixie can turn himself into a screw and screw himself in. Like this. Masterfully done. Fire. Think you can do it? Of course. Yeah. Nolik? Is it okay if I won't go? What do you mean you won't go? <sighs> Wait, I started on the wrong foot. Uh, no, I, I guess it was the right one. Don't be scared. You've done this a thousand times. Uh-huh, you're right. You had to make sure the appliance was turned off first. <sighs> yeah, I should have. This time it's not going to happen to you. It's all under control. Go on. <sighs> I'm still scared to do it. How about you try again? And who came up with this dumb screw idea? According to legend, the screw was invented in ancient times by the great Archimedes. Using his screw-tight mechanism, Archimedes built a special machine for getting water out of a canal. In ancient Rome, people used wooden screws and presses to squeeze the olive oil out of olives. Screws were also used as parts of drills or as lifting jacks. But the use of screws as fasteners did not begin until the 15th century. Soon thereafter, screws became so popular that today it's almost impossible to find an appliance made without one. And if one of these little screws should fall out, we fixies will come to the rescue. Because we don't just turn into screws when we need to hide from humans. We're always ready to do it when help is needed. Nolik, let's try it together. Don't be scared. We're here with you. Ready? And... <gasps> Nolik, watch me, son. I haven't screwed myself in in over a hundred years, but I'm not scared. Did you see that? It's a piece of cake. Grandpa's? I'm stuck. It's all my fault. There's no need to worry. Professor Eugenius, can you help <sighs> us unscrew Grandpa's? I'll be right with you. It got a bit rusty. It's probably old age. I know what will help. A drop of oil. Ow! Professor Eugenius, are you okay? I'm okay. Thank you for asking. Look out! It's going to fall! We need to fasten the shelf to the wall! No, help! We can't do this without you! Simka, I'm scared too. Nolik, save me! Uh, uh. <sighs> What's going on out there? No big deal, colleague. I just got a little bit buried. <clears throat> Will anyone unscrew me? I wish I could. And we're holding up the shelf. And Nolik? Me too! I did it! I screwed myself in! Well done, Nolik! I knew you could! And who's gonna help us now? Elisa will get here shortly. All right. We'll wait for Elisa. Yeah, just as long as her return flight isn't delayed. <sighs> <sighs> the baby doll. You gotta get out. We can't all fit in here. This time we'll take a ride, and next time you can. And I'm by myself again. Hey, don't worry. I'm gonna be getting such a cool car later today, Tula. Will it be a big one? It'll be big enough for all of you. Tom Thomas. Here, your toy came just like you wanted. Awesome. Wait. 
What is this? A baby doll? Uh, uh. Splendid. Mom, where's the car? Oh, it's got to be some mistake. I'll find out for you. I'm calling them. It's good to be a kid. People take care of you, feed you, buy you toys, and read you bedtime stories. But in return, you have to listen to adults. Go to preschool, then school, and always remember to put on a hat. All kids dream about being a parent, at least for a little while. Because moms, they're just superhuman. Human moms can do laundry, cook meals, iron clothes, and check their kids' homework all at once. Fixie moms can fix irons and hair dryers and can teach young Fixies how they can do it. It's a shame that you can't become a parent before you grow up, but you can have fun pretending to be one. That's why girls like to play with dolls. Boys usually don't like it, but I don't see why. Dads can be really cool, too. What am I supposed to do with this now? I'm not some kind of girl who plays with dolls. <laughs> hey there, come on now. That baby doll's a real cutie. Why don't you put it down and we can get back to racing? Wait, wait! The baby's hungry. He needs to eat. Thomas, help me! No, I won't. Won't you please? He's crying. Don't you hear? Mama! Oh. Mama! <laughs> That's all? After that boy? But what if something terrible has happened? My dolly's eyes were shiny. Toes and fingers tiny. He never acted whiny. I love my dolly so. Now my life is gloomy. How this happened to me? I can't find my cutie. My dolly's gone out now. Oh no. Honey, don't be upset about the car. It's gonna get here soon. By the way, why did you put the doll in the cupboard? It was so hard to find. But is it still home? It's in the box over there. It's gotta go back to the store. My poor dolly's gone. Ma, ma. My dolly! We're supposed to send him back today. Oh. Only I told Mom that I'd rather keep him. Hey! And what about your big new race car? Later. Did you do all this for me? You know... Papa! Whoa! Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> the toilet. <laughs> Drink water from the toilet. I'm not <laughs> drinking it. Then what? Washing up? In the toilet? Come on now. Then what are you staring at? 
water that inside of there? Well, I think that the toilet's broken. The water just won't stop running. Yeah, so? What do you mean, so? We gotta conserve water. Simka, you're the one that taught me that. You're right, Tom Thomas. It's important not to waste water. But the problem in this toilet isn't where you were looking. Then where? Here in the tank, not the bowl. <laughs> Almost all toilets have tanks that are used for storing water. This water is flushed into the bowl when needed. Water flows into the tank through a water valve that has a float attached to it. As the water level in the tank rises, so does the float. And when there's enough water in the tank, the float closes off the valve and the water stops. But if the float happens to break, the water will keep running through the overflow tube into the bowl. We'll be back soon. <laughs> Look at this. I can't believe how beautiful it is. Ha! I see what's wrong here. This float that we're standing on, it got disconnected for some reason. That's why the water keeps pouring out. I see. And it's going down that tube into the bowl. Well, what's the problem? It's the float. It got disconnected. Can you get it back on? Nope. Sorry. Without Papoos, we can't fix it. We'll get Papus, and you, Tom Thomas, you'll guard the door. Yeah, or someone could come and flush the toilet while we're working in the tank, and we'll get flushed away. To where? Straight into the sewer. And then it's bye-bye, Tom Thomas, forever. The sewage system is a huge network of pipes that run underground. This is where the dirty water from sinks and the waste from toilets is sent. The sewage pipes then carry this dirty water to sewage treatment plants, where the water is cleaned before it is dumped into a river or the sea. Before the first sewage systems were invented, people would just dump their waste right out their windows onto the streets. Oh, the smell in the cities was just awful. Even the first sewage systems didn't put a stop to this terrible smell. This smelly problem wasn't solved until the invention of the modern toilet. At the bottom of the toilet is a bent pipe called the siphon that's filled with water that keeps the smell from getting back into the house. Don't ask me why, but no one goes through that door. It's a secret, Chusaka. Tom Thomas, ready to eat? Not now, Mom. Not even a cookie? <laughs> All right. Here's what I need you to do. You guard the door so no one flushes the toilet. And that goes for you, too. Oh, it's terrible how much water's getting wasted. It's a good thing you noticed it. It was Tom Thomas who spotted it. <laughs> well, let's get to work. I wasn't planning on it. I was getting ready to take a shower. All right, just don't touch the toilet. What's wrong with it? It's just broken. Really? Let me check it out. Huh. No! Don't flush it! Flush it! Dad, why? Ugh. Why are you crying? We fixed it. You're here! I thought that you got flushed down into the sewer! We almost did, but Nolik saved us, both me and Papus. I'm Thomas. What was it that made you so sad? The toilet? Uh-huh. No need to be sad. The toilet's working just fine. Really? Yeah, I had to check it. <laughs> <laughs> now I need to go and check it too. 
the submarine. And the submarine disappeared into the ocean deep, leaving the vicious sharks high and dry. Ugh, that cartoon was super class. Splendid. Uh, I wish we had a submarine too. What do you say we make one? But we don't know anything about building a submarine. What makes you say that? <laughs> The most important thing for a submarine is to be airtight so that it's impossible for water to leak in from outside. And inside, there needs to be a reserve of air for breathing. For a submarine to go underwater, it uses special containers. When the containers are filled with water, the submarine becomes heavy and starts submerging. When it's time to take the submarine back up to the surface, the water in the containers is switched back for air and the light submarine climbs. And what are we going to make it out of? Out of, uh, broken toys. And where are we going to sail her? In the aquarium. Silly. Nolik's little and he's not scared of this. Yeah! Well, all right. Cast off the lines! The who? Unhook the rope, it means. Ah! You should have just said that. Are you ready? Time to take her down. Hooray! We're sailing! It's just beautiful in here. There they are, the vicious sharks. Time to scare them. Turning right. Go into that one. You can't escape <gasps> from us. Please stop it. Come on, come on, come stop on. Stop torturing the fish. It's terrible. <laughs> what? Oh, oh no. no. I don't know. There's algae wrapped around the propeller. I want my mom's here. Just be calm. There's no need to panic. Let's try taking her up. It's not working. Of course. No wonder I was scared. And so what do we do now? How about we open the hatch door? No, we can't. The water would pour into here, and then we would all drown. Well, in that case, I don't know. I need to come up with a plan. Yeah. <sighs> the world's first practical submarine was built almost 400 years ago in England. It was made out of wood and couldn't dive very deep at all. Inside the vessel, rowers sat with oars, so it couldn't move very quickly either. About 200 years later, the oars were replaced with a propeller. But the propeller on that submarine could only be turned by hand, making it a slow submarine as well. Any good swimmer could easily outrace it. It was only with the appearance of electric motors that submarines started submerging to great depths and moving through the water at very high speed. Today's modern military submarines use nuclear reactors for power. These submarines can stay underwater for months without resurfacing. Fire, can you come up with your plan quicker? Because we're running out of air. Fire, we're gonna suffocate. No, we won't, mate. <laughs> Chances are better the fish will eat us. You never should have teased them. Yeah, we're in uh. trouble. Uh. 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 Didn't I warn you, didn't I? And you wouldn't listen. You did everything just the opposite. Wait, it might work. Let's rewire the battery the opposite way. We should switch the plus and minus. How come? Because then the motor will start to turn the other way, forcing the algae to unwind. Quit it! We won't bother you anymore, all right? Peace. Thank 
Thank you so much, Tula. You really saved us. It's just because I was the one that was most frightened. No, it's because when things got really scary, you kept your cool about you. Wouldn't it be splendid if next time we built a helicopter? Musical Notes. Yeah! No! Yeah! No! Yeah! No! Hey, what a thoughtful conversation you're having there. Been going on for a while? Yeah! No! Simka, please tell Moloch what this is. A present, right? Uh-huh. From Katya. And it's got a secret code right here, you see? <laughs> There's no secret on there. They're just notes. Musical notes. Ha! See? I told you. The squiggles could have been music. I don't believe you. Come on, two people said the very same thing. Simka is not a people. She's a fixie. Anyway, there are two of us. You're ganging up on me. We're not ganging up on you, Nolik. Music is something you can play or listen to with your ears. But that's not all. You can also write it down. When we want to write down words, we use letters. And if we want to write down music, we use special symbols called musical notes. There are seven notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, and ti. The higher the sound, the higher the note sits on a set of five horizontal lines called a musical staff. Notes that look like this last longer, and notes like this are short, quick notes. Thanks to sheet music, people can read music like reading a book and then sing or play it. Until I hear you play me what you say is there, I won't believe you. On what? You know that we don't have any instruments. Try using spoons to play it. You think you're being funny? Hey, stop arguing. I know how we can play this song. We can use water. Water? <laughs> Let me get this straight. Are you trying to play the music or are you trying to wash it? That's right. Pour it in there, Tom Thomas. Some more. Hear how the sound changes? Uh-huh. Stop! Now, start pouring water in this next glass until you hear the note called T. Stop! You got it! Now pour here? Yeah. We still have one note left. And what do I do if my mom comes home? What do I say I'm doing? That you're learning to play music while you're washing the dishes. That's it. That's the high do. Now we have all the notes we need. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, and do. Class. Go on, Tom Thomas, play. How about we all play it together? Musical sounds can be produced in a variety of different ways. Violins and cellos are played with a bow. When the bow is rubbed against the string, the string vibrates like it's shivering, and that produces a beautiful sound. A guitar also has strings, but they make sound when they are plucked. And inside a piano are special hammers that hit the strings when the piano player presses down on the keys. Instruments like trumpets, trombones, flutes, and pipes make sound when air is blown through them. That's why they call them wind instruments. There are even instruments that make sound when they are rubbed by a wet finger. Try wetting your finger and carefully moving it around the rim of a wine glass. With a little bit of practice, you'll hear a lovely sound. Well, are you two ready? Yeah! Great! All together now! I know Happy this! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, Tom Thomas! Happy birthday to, to me! Tom Thomas, we also wish you a happy birthday. You see, Nolik, and you didn't believe that this was music. But I was the first to guess what song it is. Hey, thanks so much for helping me figure out Katya's present. And how about sending a song to Katya? Yeah! We can write down the musical notes to a song about the Fixies. The Fixies? We can't. We can't write down the words, but if it's just 
the notes there, then it's no problem. Hooray! <laughs> Want to play it? Of course we do. Contest. Ta da! Wait, that's a pastry! This is a pastry, Nolik, but this is an Egyptian pyramid. Oh, wow. Doesn't it look just like an anthill? Sure does. I remember when Grandpa's told us that inside of those is a labyrinth and a mummy of a sparrow. No, a pharaoh. The Egyptian pyramids are simply amazing ancient structures. The biggest one of them is the Great Pyramid of Cheops. It's more than 4,000 years old and over 100 meters tall, like a 40-story building. How it was possible to build such a giant way back then is still a mystery. There were no hoisting cranes in those days. Some people believe that the pyramids were built by aliens, but I have a feeling that they couldn't have been built without the Fixies' help. Is there a labyrinth in there? Of course. Show me. You joking? I just put it together for the contest. No way I'm going to break this apart. Hey, isn't that a way in? Where are you going? I'm just going to look at the labyrinth and the mummy. Mummy, what are you talking about? Well, which way now? Stop, you'll get lost. I won't get lost. So, I think I'll go this way and then this way. Come back, Nolik. I was already here and I was here. Oh. 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 I did get lost. You were right. What? Hey there. Do you know where Nolik is? In there. He went mummy hunting and he got lost. Mummy? Whoa. A real one? Class. Don't. Nolik. Yoo-hoo. Are you in here? No. Then where? Who knows? Who builds labyrinths like this anyway? Hey, nobody asked you to go in my labyrinth. Who are you talking to in there? Digit. Fire and Nolik are inside, and I need to go to school now. Nolik! Fire! Well, I, for one, have never gotten lost in a labyrinth because I know the rule for getting out. You need to always keep your hand on the wall. I can find them for you. Where are you guys? Over here! <laughs> I forgot which of these walls I was touching with my hand. Did you find him? No, and I got myself completely lost in here. Tom Thomas, you've got school today, don't you? Yeah, I do. Only I got a pyramid full of fixies. <laughs> it's like an anthill. Mm-hmm. The first one wanted to go mummy hunting. The second one went looking for the first one. And the third for both. We're lost in here! And I've got school to get to. Wait, maybe you could just try to shake them out. Good idea! <laughs> Joking! <laughs> you have string? Watch. This way you don't get lost. When you're going on a trip, think about how to keep from getting lost and how to find your way back. Don't just rely on maps and the GPS in your phone. Take a compass with you. It will show you the cardinal directions without needing phone service. You can also find north and south by looking at the sun, stars, or even an anthill in the woods. Take a good look. The slope that's gentler faces south, and the one that's steeper faces to the north. And if you find yourself walking through a labyrinth, don't get lost. Just walk with one hand always touching the wall, and eventually you'll get out. Another way to get through a labyrinth is to tie a rope at the entrance and unreel it along the way. Then, you can follow its path back out. Here's the first one. And the second. And Nolik? A mummy! Is it alive? It's me, Nolik! <laughs> but I couldn't find yours! That's because there's none in there. What? You mean I got lost in there for nothing? 
You were in such a hurry. You didn't listen to what I said. But without a mummy, how can you win? Oh, then maybe you could be my mummy. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, did you win a prize? Uh-huh. My pyramid won. And here's a special extra prize for being the only one of us who knew how to get out of the labyrinth. Again? Another box of those pastries? That's fine with me. I really love them. They're awesome. I wish Fixies ate food. What a shame. Then I'll give some to your mommy. <laughs> Vitamins. Seven times five is 35. Seven times six, um, uh, wait a sec. Uh, it's, uh... Tom Thomas, are you ready? For what? For our walk. Did you forget? Oh, yeah. I'm having such problems with my memory. I keep trying to memorize this table, but I can't. <laughs> if you want to improve your memory, you need vitamins. Vitamins? Well, how's it going, Tom Thomas? Not well. My memory's just terrible. Studying's getting me nowhere. Hey, don't be discouraged. We'll make your memory better with some vitamins. Oh, now you about vitamins. Uh, and who else? Just a school friend. Well, all right. Vitamins are very important for people's health even though you don't need much of them. For instance, vitamin A is necessary for good eyesight and normal growth. Vitamin C helps keep you from getting sick. Vitamin D makes your teeth and bones stronger. Usually, people get the vitamins they require from a diet of fruits, dairy, vegetables, and other healthy foods. But if someone still isn't getting the vitamins their body needs, then doctors recommend taking special vitamin pills. All right. Take out some vegetables and some fruit. And some berries. They have a lot of vitamins, too. Forget about it. We're strengthening your memory with vitamins. And you'll study the multiplication table at the same time. All right, then. There are three cherries in each pile. Tom Thomas eats five piles. Go on, eat, eat. So. Here's the question. How many cherries did Tom Thomas eat all together? I don't know. What'd you say? I said I don't know. Try counting those pits, then. <laughs> huh. Fifteen. That's right. And that means that three times five equals fifteen. Now, try my problem. Tom Thomas ate three pairs of apples. That's easy. The answer's six. I just couldn't find more apples for that one. Tom Thomas, quit slacking off. To get this problem right, you have to eat the apples. They have vitamins. Anyhow, we don't have enough carrots for me to learn how to multiply by nine. All right, then. I'll help you. To multiply two by three, all you need to do is just add three twos together. It's much harder to multiply a number by nine. That takes too much time to add. That's why at schools they want you to memorize the table. But there's a simple way to multiply by nine without the table or a calculator. Let's say you need to multiply the number three by nine. Put your hands face up in front of you. Now, find the third finger from the left and bend it down. So what do we see? There are two fingers to the left of the bent finger and seven fingers to the right. Two and seven means that the answer is 27. You got it? Great! Let's do another problem. What is seven times nine? Here are six fingers and here are three. That's right! The answer is 63. Did you eat all of that? But you're the one that told me 
you need to eat vitamins. That's why I got these vitamins for you. That little? What do you mean, little? There's enough in this bottle for a month. Go ahead, try one. They're very good for you. They taste good, too. <laughs> right. Better than an onion. <laughs> or a radish. <laughs> Can I have another one? No, that's enough. You shouldn't take more than one vitamin every day. I remember where I saw this. I saw the same kind of bottle with a green lid over at Katya's. Speaking of memory, let's check your multiplication table. Let's say that you and Katya are each taking one vitamin a day. So, how many have you eaten after nine days? The answer is 18. <laughs> well done. It's getting better. Vitamins really work. The frying pan. Skates and still do it. If I was on skates, I could jump ten times in a row. Well, I could do a hundred with my eyes shut. Then let's see you. There's no skating rink. There will be. What will, will there be? A skating rink. Where? In the frying pan. Uh-oh. All right, my bragging buddies. Go get your skates. Fixies love playing sports. You might find Fixie adults working out with weights or maybe working on a gymnastics routine. Fixie kids love having Fixie board contests or taking part in parkour competitions where they have to run, jump, and hop over all sorts of obstacles. These kinds of competitions usually take place inside of sophisticated appliances. Orienteering is held inside these appliances, too. That's when Fixies use a map to follow a complicated route. And the route is quite exact. You can't make one wrong turn. But the Fixies' favorite game has got to be hide-and-seek. Nobody can compete with them in this game. You don't believe me? <laughs> Watch! The rink is frozen. <laughs> So, who's first? Nola, come on! <laughs> <laughs> well, are you going to jump? <laughs> wow, class! <laughs> and that's all? Not at all. No lick! No lick! No lick! No He's lick! not gonna make it. Too short a start. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do any more because I'm injured. Sure, say no more, Mr. Braggart. Then it's your turn, Simka. Now watch and see how it's done. La 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 Oh, wow. Nolik, you never had a chance. Like always. She gets in my way, and now she's gonna win. Nolik, do you really want to beat her? Uh-huh. You see the salt? What? You think we should cook her? Of course not. But if we put some salt on the ice, it'll melt. Simka, didn't you say that you were gonna skate with your eyes closed? Piece of cake! What? Can't do it? Watch and learn. One. And two. Well done. And three. Hey, this is salt. That wasn't fair, guys. You wouldn't have done a hundred jumps anyway. Let's start the contest all over again. But this time we play by the rules. Oh. Look, there's a scratch in the pan. What? What a disaster. You can cook just about anything in a frying pan. Meat, fish, vegetables. In order to stop food from sticking to the pan, modern frying pans are covered with a non-stick coating like Teflon. You can cook in these pans without even using oil. 
and they're easy to clean. But you have to treat this kind of kitchenware very carefully. It's better not to use metal spatulas or forks that can scratch it, because you shouldn't cook food in a pan that has scratches on it. It can be really dangerous for your health. Yeah, this pan's completely shot. It's all because of your dumb bet. It's all because someone was cheating. Mom's back. Please, Simka, help me out, will you? I'll give you any wish you want. Or three. No, five. Five? <laughs> I can help you. If you guys jump up and down a hundred times on one leg, we could do two hundred. Tom Thomas, what do you say we make those crepes? Mmm, these crepes are perfect. I just love cooking with this pan. Why are you jumping? I want to make my legs stronger. <laughs> Anyway, you never could have jumped a hundred times in there. Bet on it? Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> Hockey. Today I'm definitely going to beat you. You already forgot? You're just one, and we're a team, baby. Just you wait. <laughs> one nothing. Um, Katya? Uh, hi. What are you doing here? Katya came to pick up something for her mom. I need a little more time. Can you wait here? Yes, of course. I'd be happy to. We can play a game. Hmm. Only just not hockey. I never understood why boys are so crazy about it. I'm baffled by it, too. Oh, the Fixies are here. Hi, guys. Hi, hi there. Even though you clearly don't get hockey, I'm sorry. We're finishing this game. And after that, my dad and I are going to go and see a real hockey game at the arena. I'm sure that a real game is just as boring. You're wrong! <laughs> hockey is an incredibly interesting game, but it isn't easy. A player needs so many different skills, like skating very fast, stopping quickly, dodging the opposing players, controlling his stick, and shooting the puck into the goal. <laughs> And there's no way to do all of that without science. For instance, to calculate how hard to hit the puck or how quickly to stop. Hockey players learn all about that during their practices. They put on their protective gear and go for it. And that's not all. Hockey players also have to be brave and nimble. Otherwise, they might find themselves unable to stop and crashing into the boards or taking a puck to the head. Ow! But as the saying goes, Hockey is not for cowards. Tidish! Go! What are you waiting for? Katya, you just made me miss that. I'm sorry. to be helping you, if you didn't notice. You said you don't like hockey, so quit giving me advice. Hmm, whatever. That was my second goal from that spot over there. You lucked out. Uh-huh, sure did. He'll have less luck if you keep this player back, and that one needs to pass off the boards. Get your goal. Before she said that, she didn't know anything exactly about hockey. Thing. So are we playing or not? Is zoom in towards the goal to score and break the tie. It's one for all and all for one. Great teamwork is a must. Let's go and show them how it's done. This game was made for us. Hockey's our game. Hockey. Hockey's our game.
it hadn't been for Katya. But the winning goal was mine. Tom Thomas, it's time for the game. Ready to get going? Katya, I'll take you home. Oh, um, could I go with you to see the hockey? I never realized it's such a great game. Hey, you know what? Why don't we go to the game together? Maybe I'll like it too. Great, it's about time. Let's go. How did we possibly lose that? Aren't we a great team? Well, Tom Thomas has his own team now. And not only that, they don't give up. It's not that, it was beginner's luck. That's all that it was. The iron. All done. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Professor Eugenia! Mm -hmm. Yes, Elisa? The award ceremony's in an hour. You need to leave soon. I remember, Elisa. What are you getting an award for? It's the... <laughs> it's the genius of the year. Not too modest, but fair. <laughs> and well-deserved. Wow. And they're giving it to you? Well, yeah. Will they show it on TV? <laughs> Why, of course. Class. And during your speech, can you say hi to me? And me, and me. And Zipka. Right. Say something like this. I'd like to send a big shout out to all my Fixie friends. Oh, that's a great idea. That way, everyone can know about Fixies. Professor Eugenius, didn't I see an iron in here earlier? Hmm? Huh? Oh! Oh, come on, Elisa. There's no need for that. I'm not going to argue with you. You have to look just perfect. Otherwise, everybody is going to think that I don't take care of you. First, we'll let the iron warm up, and then I can iron your suit. The most essential part of an electric iron is called the heating coil. It's hidden inside the iron sole plate. When the iron is plugged into an electrical outlet, the coil gets hot and heats up the sole. People use a hot iron to remove the wrinkles from their clothing. Irons also have a water container. When the water gets hot, it turns into steam. The steam comes out through the holes in the iron sole, making it even easier to remove wrinkles. Wow, wow, that sure is hot. All that's left to do is pour some water into it. Professor, this is water, right? Yeah, yeah, it's water. That isn't water. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's not water, it's not water. Then what is it? Well, it's, uh, juice. Juice? Yeah, juice. Oh, no, the poor iron won't last. Phew, and it smells like crud. I broke the iron, it's awful. No, 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 <gasps> Elisa, don't be so upset. Don't be so upset. It's the genius of the year ceremony, and you'll be in a wrinkled suit in front of the whole country. Oh, I won't survive. <laughs> <laughs> I... Elisa, hang in there. Be careful. Elisa. I... Elisa. Professor Eugenius, are you all right? Oh, couldn't be any better. We're going to go fix that iron for you. And while we're doing that, you go fix Elisa. That would be great. <gasps> Look over there. I'll fix the contact. You and Nola can scrape that burnt juice off the iron. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Elisa, Elisa, please wake up. Uh... We did it. Your iron is fixed. Elisa, you should see the iron. It's working. What? And I'm just lying around here? I have to hurry. Where's the iron and your suit? Wrinkled clothing is not very beautiful. And that's why, since ancient times, people have been trying to find different ways to get rid of wrinkles. For example, long ago, people would put their wrinkled clothing under a heavy, flat rock. In ancient Rome, people used to beat their crinkled garments with a metal hammer. And in China, fabric was ironed with hot frying pans. Irons with a shape like what is used today appeared during the Middle Ages. They were made out of cast iron and needed to be heated up on a stove before they could be used. 
Later, people came up with irons that were heated by putting hot coals inside. And finally, in the 19th century, a convenient electrical iron was invented and has been used ever since. And the prize for Genius of the Year goes to... Professor Eugenius! Bravo! Bravo, Professor! I thank you. I give my sincerest thanks to you. And may I take this opportunity to send my greetings to Fix? Uh, uh, uh to all the fix -assists. Just give me the prize. Oh, that was quick thinking. Brilliant. He is just astounding. Perfection from head to toe. <gasps> Well, practically perfect. <laughs> the bird feeder. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Did you hear that? What? Oh, again. Outside the window. There. Huh, a little bird. He's beautiful. Uh-huh. Only he looks sad. Just wait till he sees what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I guess he doesn't think you're funny. That's because he's cold out there. <gasps> he wants to eat, that's all. Maybe we should make a feeder for the poor bird. Do you know how to make a bird feeder? No. But we both know someone who knows everything. In the winter, it's not easy for birds to find food under the snow. Luckily, many people come to the rescue. They build little houses for the birds, designed to hold food. The name for these houses are naturally bird feeders. Bird feeders can be made out of wood, plastic, or even something as simple as a milk or juice carton. Building a bird feeder by hand isn't hard to do at all. But building it is only one part of the work. What's most important is remembering to keep it filled with food. Well, shall we start? An idea. <laughs> Adisa, I need some of your food for a little bird. You aren't greedy. Greedy, greedy, greedy. I didn't know Adisa is greedy. A geese is greedy. You need to learn how to share. A geese is greedy. What, like there's not enough food? Not enough food, not enough food, not enough food, not enough. Wow, now there's two of them out there. Eat, there's enough food for everybody. Poor a geese, poor a geese. Let's bring them in here. We can open a, a restaurant a for poor birds. little bird. Why did you scare the little birds away? That feeder's for them, get it? Just fly away. Shoo! Uh, 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 uh. He's bullying our friends. Hey, you leave! Leave! You'll never chase him away now. We'll see about that. Aha! Serves you right, Pigeon. It's not nice to bully little guys. Yeah, and how about big guys? It's all right to bully them. The poor Pigeon also wants some food. Food! Food! You sure? Sure! Winter can be beautiful, but also very cold. Animals have different ways to prepare for when the weather gets cold. Some birds gather into flocks and migrate to where it's warmer. 
You could almost say they're flying to a resort. Squirrels, hamsters, and chipmunks collect and store nuts, mushrooms, and pine cones. There are many people who don't have pantries that are as well stocked. Badgers and bears eat a lot of extra food in the fall and then go to sleep in their dens and burrows for the whole winter. Fish also sleep in the winter, only they're at the bottom of rivers and lakes. Frogs, snakes, and even wasps burrow in the ground, while hares, foxes, and wolves grow thick coats that protect them from the freezing cold. Although it isn't easy for them to find food, So that will be your feeder, and that new one will be for the little birds. Hey, are you taking their food again? There you go. Huh. But those little birds, they'll probably never come back here. Look, Nolik! <gasps> they came back! solar system, and it consists of... Friends, you're not going to believe it. I found... I discovered an unknown star. That is superb, Kali. Yeah. And today, journalists will visit the laboratory for an interview. Who's going to be interviewed? If you weren't late, you'd know that. I had to do my hair. They're here. Everyone hide. in the universe with billions of hot glowing spheres that everybody knows as stars. Stars are each born out of huge clouds of gas and dust that are called nebulas. We see stars in the sky as tiny dots, but that's only because they are very, very far away. The closest star to our planet is the sun. Even though the sun isn't the hugest star, it still gives us the heat and light we need to live. Professor Eugenius is a celebrity now, on a global scale. Yeah. Hey, did you see? Verda also got on the cover. No joke. Where? <gasps> and I think we look pretty good together. So, who wants my autograph? <laughs> we'll have to wait till after school. <laughs> it's time to go. Hey, aren't you going? Not right now. My colleague and I have more important business. What colleague? The professor. Both of us have become celebrities. Verda, you got on that cover totally by accident. Oh, oh, oh. somebody's jealous. <laughs> well, we've got our new star. <laughs> now, what should I name it? A uh, colleague? Huh? Why don't you name the new star Verda? After all, it does sound pretty. Verda, Verda, hmm. Like a vertex whirling around. <laughs> That's a great idea. It's a shame you didn't get my autograph, because that new star now has my name, Verda. Huh. And now an elaborate celebration needs to be thrown in my honor. I mean, mine and the professor's, of course. What celebration are you talking about? With a red carpet and flowers? Why are you just standing there? Make it happen! The poor girl thinks she's a star. Absolutely. So what can we do about it? With lunatics, it's better not to argue. That's what I read. Then let's play your silly game. <laughs> your Majesty, your red carpet awaits. Then unroll it. And the flowers? Am I supposed to do everything myself? Of course not. Here, Your Highness, your crown. All right, now we're talking. I'm a star. She's totally lost it. Mm hmm He's coming. Finally, finally, my dream is reality. Hi. Ah, oh, my little fixie friends, it's you here. I'm so honored you gathered here to congratulate me today. <laughs> us? Yes, us, them, we. 
we all should celebrate. No, I mean you and I. <laughs> now show us what you're carrying. Uh, of course, the certificate. It says this star discovered by Professor Eugenius has been registered with the name VE03732. What? Oh. <laughs> That's what we should start calling our big star from now on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's so funny? Night is perfect for searching in the sky for constellations. The easiest one to find is the Great Bear or the Big Dipper, which looks like a soup ladle. If you draw a line through the two outside stars of the Big Dipper, you'll find the bright North Star, which is part of a constellation called the Little Bear or the Little Dipper. A bit further is the W-shaped Cassiopeia. And these three stars that are next to each other are well known as the Belt of Orion. If you draw a line through them, you'll find a star named Sirius. It's part of the Greater Dog Constellation, and it's the brightest star in the night sky. And on the other side of it, there is the star Aldebaran of the constellation Taurus. And these are but a few of the most visible stars. It's not even possible to imagine how many stars there really are in the universe. Tula? I'm here. Fire? Here. VE73032? Is that someone new? Yeah, we've got a new student. She's a star. A new giant star. You <laughs> bet. <laughs> the parrot. Adisa, do you want a cracker? Wow. Tom Thomas, who is that? Simka Nolik. This is Adisa. My dad brought him from Africa. <laughs> I can't believe it. You've got a real parrot. Can he talk? My dad said that he can, but I haven't heard him yet. Well, let's see if he can. Okay, say, Adisa's a good bird. No, he should learn my name. That would be awesome. Adisa, say, Nolik. That's my name. He doesn't want to talk about you, Nolik. Hmm, maybe he doesn't know how to speak human language. Check it out! It looks like he knows how to speak dog. No, no, like, he doesn't know any languages at all. Then how can he talk? Parrots can repeat many of the different sounds that they hear. For instance, a dog's bark or the ring of the phone. Parrots can also mimic words or even whole sentences of human speech. But parrots don't understand the meaning of the words they are saying. They just repeat them like a music player. Hey, hello. Hey, hello. That's why you won't be able to have a real conversation with a parrot, even if it's the kind of parrot that can talk. All right, then let's have him repeat something. Hey, Adisa, Tadish, it's the Fixie's special sign. Say it. Fixie's had a special sign. Tadish. <gasps> My dad is back. Let's hide, quickly. Hi there. Well, how's it going? You two talking to each other yet? I can't get him to say anything at all. You can't? Hmm. Adisa, how are you? This is a good parrot. <gasps> he wouldn't say anything before. Eh, he's used to talking around me. Adisa's a good parrot. Nolik, that's my name. Hmm? Whose name is Nolik? Uh, no. He was saying he's got no luck in this game. What kind of game? <laughs> Let's hide. Quickly, <gasps> hide. Uh, we were playing hide and seek. <laughs> With the parrot? Uh-huh. <sighs> Fixies have a special sign. <gasps> oh! Fixies have a special sign. Oh! What? Fixies? A special sign? Uh, no. It was physics. It's a special science. Uh, that's what we're studying about right now at school. You know, how special oh. physics is. Wow, that's impressive. Um, well, keep up the good work, son. Whew. 
The ability to repeat what humans say is not something unique to only parrots. Crows, starlings, and other animals can do it too. And besides animals, there are also machines that can repeat human speech. For instance, when you call somewhere and hear, leave your message after the tone, what you're hearing is a voicemail machine using a recorded voice to answer the call. Another example is the voice on trains and buses that is used to announce the stops. Those voices are usually recordings that are repeated over and over. Today, there are also artificial voices on computers, tablets, and smartphones that can read text and say it out loud. But even if a machine knows what you are saying, it can't know why you are saying it. Only people can figure that out. And fixies, of course. Huh? Tom Thomas, you're a hero. You really wiggled your way out of that one. And Adisha, bad parrot. He almost gave up our secret. Be careful with that parrot. I get it. Adisa, listen, you. Forget everything we said. And don't ever say no word. Okay? Yeah, nothing about the Fixies at all. Yeah, so if you meet a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. Got it? Oh, he's nodding. Looks like he understands. Let's get out of here so he'll forget about us as soon as possible. So if you meet a Fixie, please, don't let their secret out. Tadish, Tadish, Tadish. The construction set. Tom Thomas. Huh? Why are you sitting in the dark? Because it looks better this way. Check it out. Oh, oh, look at that. What a beautiful castle this is. It's like out of a fairy tale. No, it's from my construction set. I put it together myself. Class! Oh, let's be knights. I love that game. And so does the old dragon. Lock the fair princess inside of the castle. I get to be the princess. Oh, where is the brave knight who will rescue me from the evil dragon? Hang on, I'll save you, Simka. No, look, you really don't look like a knight. You don't even have armor. Armor. Wait, hang on a second. A construction set lets you build lots of different things from a set of parts. Put them together like this, you've got a house. Like this, a car. Or like this, a spaceship. The parts might be made of metal and connected with screws. Some construction sets have plastic parts you click together. Other sets are models where the pieces are glued together. You can also find magnetic sets. Touch the parts together and magnetic attraction makes them stick. Beware, dragon! Oh, save me! Oh, help me! Hmm, where's that knight already? And where's the castle? The planet has been attacked by robots! And they have destroyed the castle. Oh, and they've kidnapped me. And are you still a princess? Of course I'm still a princess. Oh, save me, brave knight. Right. <laughs> What's going on? This is a magnetic construction set. And your armor is made out of metal. So you got attracted to the magnets. <laughs> Tom Thomas, it's not fair. Unattract me. <laughs> OK. Oh, rescue me! Help me! You gotta save me! Hang in there! I'll be right back! I gotta change my costume! Anything. 
Simka, stay right there. And don't even think about running away. And so it goes. Everyone's abandoned the poor princess. Oh. Simka's my older sister. That's why she thinks it's okay to get bossy with me. But I don't let it get to me, because she's very smart and a quick thinker. She knows gadgets better than just about anybody. It's always interesting with Simka. And she's really smart, too. She gets nothing but A's at school. Everyone in our class loves her. Only she and Verda don't get along too well. It's because of fire. Well, you get it. Sometimes Simka can be way too strict with me. You can't do this. You shouldn't do that. But if an exciting adventure comes along, she's always right there with us. Simka's brave. She's got the skills. Yeah, she's always ready to take on a challenge. I've got an awesome sister. But just keep that between us. Because if you tell her, it might go to her head. How long am I supposed to sit here? Hey, anyone? Hey! Oh! Help me! <laughs> Saka, you give that back. Leave, leave this room. Are you okay? I can't leave you alone for a minute. Yeah, I think we're okay. Nola got here and saved me from Chusaka for real. Just like a real live knight. Oh, come on, pretty knight. I'm not kidding. You deserve to be one. And to protect every living creature from pesky Chusakas everywhere. I promise. <laughs> to be a knight, Sir Nolan. Hooray, hooray, hooray! Kitty! The Rock. Tom Thomas is back! Hooray! So, how was your camping trip? Super! You've got to check out what I found. Rocks? That's just half of it. Wow! Is that a screw? It looks kind of strange. Because it got petrified millions of years ago. <laughs> Screws weren't around then. They came much later. And how do we know that? It could be the first one discovered. And maybe it's not just some screw. Know what I'm saying? Are you saying that we might be looking at... A Fixie! Fixies believe that their ancestors came into being not that long ago, right when humans started inventing complicated devices. But what if that's not true? Maybe millions of years ago, before the dinosaurs, there were a different kind of fixies that inhabited the Earth. And maybe there were people then, too. And fixies weren't hiding from them. They were friends who they helped with everything. Together, they used to create inventions, construct buildings, and make scientific discoveries. But then there was some horrible catastrophe, and this whole civilization disappeared. And what if someday scientists find traces of that civilization? Then ancient fixies will be discovered as well. That would be so cool. <laughs> My imagination ran away with me. You're right. He could be our great great grandpoosh. Or our great great grandmas. Do you think maybe we could bring it back to life? We could screw it in somewhere. You get energy from electricity, right? What an idea! But what if our great great gets super scared because everything is different? We can build him a prehistoric world to wake up to! Time to bring him back to life. And you, Tom Thomas, disguise yourself. We'll break him like this. We need a different way to do it. We need more power for this. <laughs> there wasn't any electricity back then. That's why shocking him won't work. <laughs> Oh, our great-great-ancestors! 
ancestor who came to us from an ancient home be released from this stone. Be free! Why is it always so difficult with relatives? Wake up! Wake up! And what if... Everything. This is just a waste of time. Oh, uh, let's sing that song about the screw. Our song. No, look, it's never gonna work. You don't know that. We can at least give it a try. If, if you think, think a screw is nothing, take it out, but, but just beware. beware. Everything, Everything will break, break without them with, with no little, little screws in there. Look, it's moving. It's impossible. It really did. If, if you, you think, think a screw, screw is nothing, nothing take, take it out, but just beware. Found Thomas, hey. Well, how was your camping trip? Uh... Seems to me quite a success. Yeah. So, let's see what you found there. Do you know what this is? Well, it's a rock. It isn't. It's the stalk of a sea lily. You mean a flower? An animal who lives at the bottom of the sea. Its stalk makes it look like a flower, like a lily. <laughs> On planet Earth, there are lots of rocks. Some of them are hiding deep below the surface, and others appear with volcanic lava. Remember those fairy tales where an evil witch would turn everything living into stone? Well, it's really happened, just without any magic. Some prehistoric plants and animals were petrified way back when, and they've remained that way ever since. Thanks to them, we can get an idea about what life was like on Earth millions of years ago. And this one's a devil's finger, the squid's ancestor. How do you know all this stuff? When I was your age, I collected fossils and rocks. Let's go. I'll show you my collection. Do you think any of our ancestors were sea lilies? Uh-uh. Shame. Why did I let myself get so carried away? There weren't any ancient fixies in the world. <sighs> but I... I still believe in them. They just haven't found the right rock yet. But they'll find it. I know they will. The helicopter. It's very important, and I need your advice. Hey, uh, sorry I'm late. Oh, girls, I can hardly wait to see this. Here it goes. Hey there. Where did you get a helicopter? Professor Eugenie threw it away, but we, we fixed it. Come fly with us. Hop in. There's no way. We're busy. Doing what? Go find somewhere else to fly! You got it, no problem. Now back to our job. Stop it right now! You're bothering us! And, and you're going to fall! Land on helicopter! We can't do it! But you're flying it! Why can't you land it? Because there's a controller our pilot. Uh, uh, digit, fly on. Uh, uh. <laughs> Helicopters fly with the help of propellers. The biggest one is called the main rotor blade. When the engine turns it, the rotor pushes the air with such a powerful force that it lifts the helicopter up off the ground. Of course, helicopters can't fly as fast as airplanes, but they have the ability to easily land on a small patch of ground. And unlike airplanes, helicopters can hover in the air for a long time and even fly backwards. Digit, turn us to the left. Huh? <laughs> Hang on, hang on. This is one amazing rotor-driven machine. Leonardo da Vinci himself had a design for one. And now look who's controlling it. It really is impressive. You're a total ace on that controller. And so smart. And brave. <laughs> the girls really like boys like that. That's how I roll. Sure, yeah, you're great. Now land it. Digit! 
For you distracting our pilot, everything would have been okay. A real pilot, you know, shouldn't get distracted. And first, he has to learn how to fly on a simulator, right, Digit? Uh huh. That's true, but we don't have one. Don't go anywhere. Airplanes, helicopters, trains, and even cars are complicated machines that can be a challenge to navigate. And if you don't watch what you're doing, you can easily end up having an accident. That's why future pilots, train operators, and drivers all take comprehensive training classes that include learning how to fly a plane or drive a train using simulators. This, for instance, is an exact copy of a cockpit, only without wings and with screens for windows. You pull the controller and the cabin moves the way it would if you were actually taking off. And on the screens, the Earth is racing under the clouds. It takes your breath away. Commercial pilots are required to take part in many simulations like this before they're allowed to pilot a real airplane. Our pilot simulator is ready to go. Oh, wow. And I'll be the first one to try it. Here we go. Ah, uh, kids. Right, Digit? <coughs> I'm only going over there just to take a look. Uh, you know how those two can behave. I'll just it's watch my them. Turn again. Hey, wait. It's my turn now. Boys are just silly. They're never serious. They just joke around. <gasps> Speaking of serious, we have some important business to take care of. <gasps> You're, You're right. right. figure out where I should put them. What about on the pack -a mat Oh, that's a very serious problem. Yeah. This is really important, not something silly like those boys are doing. The backpack. All right, homework's all done. Time to play? Tom Thomas, is that how you pack your backpack? Why not? What's wrong with it? I don't know how you think you're going to find anything at all in there. I will, too. Then go and find your ruler. Here you go. An eraser? Hang on, I'll get it. Where is it? Uh, you can't find it. What a shame. It's because this backpack is so lousy. The backpack is just fine. If you don't want to lose anything, you got to pack it carefully. Or have a pack -a mat that can just hand everything to you. Oh, yeah! That's just what I need! A pack -a mat Only Fixies have pack -a mats And I'm gonna have one. I'll make my own. <laughs> There's no way. Way? Because I'll help them do it. Sure, Nolik. A backpack is a bag with shoulder straps attached. It was invented to make it easier to carry heavy loads for long distances and also for freeing up the hands. Backpacks help us maintain good posture and avoid slouching by putting the load's weight onto our back muscles and our spine. And you can fit so many things into a backpack, especially if the backpack has lots of separate compartments and everything is packed nice and neatly. The first backpacks were quite heavy and uncomfortable. They were made out of wood and leather. These kinds of backpacks were worn by ancient hunters. Later on, lighter backpacks appeared that were made out of canvas and became quite popular with travelers and soldiers. Today's backpacks are so light that even kids can carry them. <laughs> Testing of the world's first pack a mat design, especially for humans, begins! Ready? Ready to go! First thing out of your backpack, uh, I mean pack a mat, an eraser! Got it! Watch me! Cool. A pen! 
Mine! Your blue one! Got it! Hmm. <laughs> We're experiencing technical problems. We need a break. Testing of the world. I know, first. I know. Just start. Take out the eraser. Mm hmm. <laughs> we'll say you did it. Take out the blue pen. Oh, wow. The ruler's next. The world's first pack mat And where's the uh, Nolik? Don't worry, he'll come later. Testing. All right, already. Let's get it started. Go ahead. The eraser. We've seen that twice already. The blue pen. Can you take out the ruler? Sure, I can. Drum roll, please. Whoa. It's not possible. Let me see. Now I get it. Why don't you take out your science book? Science book. <laughs> Cuckoo, did you get the textbook? <laughs> There's no way. It's huge. Yeah. Some inventors you are. <laughs> your invention calls for a little improvement, and I know what it is. What? Just make sure that when you put things into your backpack, you do it neatly. Do it neatly. Takes forever and it's boring. I'm gonna show you how to make it fun. <laughs> Whenever it's a school day, a backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. Your pencils, books, and papers will fit inside indeed. We'll fit inside, we'll fit inside, we'll fit inside indeed. Without a backpack on your back. Whenever you go hiking, a backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. A backpack's all you need. Whatever you've collected will fit inside indeed. We'll fit inside, we'll fit inside, we'll fit inside indeed. Without a backpack on your back, you won't get by. You won't succeed, but with a backpack on your back, The Coffee Maker. Tadish! Hi there, Tom Thomas. Are you ready for school? Uh-huh. And you? I'm helping Masia today for school. Three more patients? How in the world can I do it all? I have that new equipment being delivered, and I'm leading this week's case presentations. Oh, well. Somehow I'll have to figure out how to do it. Um... Good morning. Yeah, just great, huh? I got work piled up to the ceiling. Okay, a cup of coffee is the only thing that can save me today. Now what? The last thing I need is to be late. The coffee maker started its cleaning cycle. She'll have to wait. <clears throat> What's the problem? Why don't you work? Are you going to work or what? <clears throat> Oh, the poor coffee maker. Oh, Tom Thomas's poor mother. That's enough. Work already. What is going on today? <laughs> hey, Mom, come on. Let me give it a try. I can't take any more of this. We've got to help her. I really hope nothing broke in there. Don't worry. We'll get it working. Just distract your mom. Mom, and what if the coffee maker just started working again right now? Would that save your day, you think? Mm-hmm. Early coffee makers would do nothing more than heat up the water and force it through the ground coffee. Today's generation of devices are often called coffee machines. 
they can do so much more and even remove the mineral deposits themselves. These machines can make your coffee any strength and add milk and sugar if that's how you like it. And most conveniently, they can grind the coffee beans right before brewing. Just press the button and the fresh cup of coffee is ready. And that aroma. The main thing with any coffee maker is to be nice to it. Then you just give it some time and it starts working by itself. That is just absurd. Restarting it is the first step. Simka, get over there and open and close that contact. Mm -hmm. You see? That's what I was talking about. A coffee maker isn't alive. It's a machine, that's all. Then how come you hit it like you did? Hmm. But if you're really nice to it and you pet it... Then she'll purr. Hear that? It liked that a lot. Coffee maker, blink to us when you're ready to start working. Turn on the display. Mm -hmm. See that? It answered us. <gasps> it behaves like it's really alive. Well, coffee maker, make coffee. It's impossible. Today, time for a little surprise. Just don't give up our secret. You fixed it somehow. What's your secret? It's simple. If you handle appliances with care, then they'll take care of you. <sighs> the magic taste of coffee was first appreciated in Arabia. And that's why the most well-known variety of coffee is called Arabica. Coffee trees grow throughout the world in mountain regions where the weather is warm and humid. The branches of coffee trees get covered with coffee berries. But to make the coffee drink, we don't need the berries, just the seeds inside. After the coffee beans are roasted and then ground, hot water is added. Different cultures serve coffee differently. Some serve it hot, some cold. With sugar, with milk, with ice cream, with cinnamon, with ginger, and even with salt and pepper. They say that coffee gives people energy and helps them from feeling tired. But it's important not to drink too much. Tom Thomas, you're a powerful wizard. <laughs> she believes it. <laughs> it's remarkable. I can't believe an ordinary coffee maker can be so emotional. <laughs> Poor thing. Forgive me, huh? And that's not all. If you take care of your coffee maker and you're nice to it, it can even, it can even sing a song. Oh, my dear Augustine, Augustine, Augustine. <laughs> I've got to be hearing things. <laughs> You've got me under your spell, Tom Thomas. Time to go. <laughs> Augustine. Huh. Oh, my dear Augustine, Augustine. Why did you start singing? Sorry, I got carried away. <laughs> and I got carried away. Sing me that song again, will you? Oh, my dear Augustine, Augustine, Augustine. Oh, my dear Augustine, everything's gone. The Masquerade. So, Tom Thomas, did you choose a costume for the New Year's party? Not yet. These are no good. I've been a pirate. How about a vampire? Did that. And a knight? Mm-hmm. This year, I... I want to do something that's original. And what if... I know what! You can go dressed as me! As Nolik! Perfect! No one's ever gone as a fixie. Ever! Long, long ago, people would put on masks and dance in order to scare away evil spirits. In ancient theater, actors would change masks to play a few different roles. Everyone liked the idea of hiding their faces behind mysterious masks so much that people started organizing fun outdoor festivals called masquerades. There are countries around the world, like Brazil and Italy, that turn into one big masquerade ball during the holidays. Hey there, what are you making? A costume for a masquerade! Can you guess who I'm going as? Yeah, but why does it have to be Nolik? Because I came up with it! Fire'd be a much cooler costume! <laughs> That's not true! Stop arguing! I can go dress up as you and you! Now we're talking! <clears throat> 
smart fixies wear glasses. <laughs> Your glasses are too small to even fit on his finger. Then I'll make glasses just like yours. What a cute fixie. Splendid. Not bad. Only if I were you, I'd add a backpack to your costume. Any fixie who's fashionable is wearing it. And maybe add my curls to it, please? Uh... If you don't, then our feelings will be hurt. Class! Did we cover everybody? Ah! Oh, we didn't include Simka! <gasps> and where are we gonna find room for her? What can I do about it? I already gotta get going. Then let's just not tell her. See you later, Tom Thomas. Thanks, guys. Tish! What have you been doing all this time while I was busy loading up the confetti? Uh, we were doing our homework. And looking at this magazine? And talking? Yeah, all of that and more. <laughs> That's gotta be the worst lying ever. Tell me what you're hiding. Have you lost your minds? Sorry, but there was absolutely no room left on Tom Thomas. That's not what I'm talking about. What is the number one rule for fixies? Well, what did we promise? We, we won't, won't let out our secret. secret. Right, but you just let it out. Now everyone will know. Tom Thomas wouldn't tell anyone about us. I hope he doesn't. Well, maybe. Everyone will figure that he's dressed up like some nutty candy. What kind of nutty candy has a backpack on and glasses? We're in real trouble. I thought the glasses looked sharp. So what are we going to do now? Call the professor, right? Or we should call Grampus or Papus. Ah! Don't panic. Let's wait till Tom Thomas gets back. There are many different types of masks, and some of them are very important. Medical masks are used by both doctors and sick people to reduce the spread of illnesses. Oxygen masks help people breathe. Fencers, hockey goalies, and boxers all use masks to protect their faces from being hit. The blue glass in a welder's mask is used to protect their eyes from dangerously bright light. Sea divers wear masks for swimming underwater. Without a mask, it would be very difficult to see the beauty of the underwater world. The masks that people wear at carnivals and parties? Well, they're just for having fun and putting everyone in a good mood. Or as a disguise, so that no one recognizes you right away. It can be a lot of fun to fool somebody like that. So how was it? It was great! They had a contest for costumes, and I won! Hooray, that's all. Say bye to us. <sighs> I hope you won't be upset, guys. But I couldn't tell anyone that I was a fixie. Here's all I could think of. Grand prize for best costume, robotic toucan! Hey, come on! Do you think we look like toucans? Yeah? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> all right there, fixie toucans. We've got work to do. Happy New Year! <laughs> the Pencil Well done, Tom Thomas. Your mom's birthday's today and you're still sleeping. Hey, what's that? It's a drawing! A portrait of his mom! In my opinion, this mom doesn't look very much like Tom Thomas's mom. Maybe he didn't get to finish the picture yet. He was tired and passed out. This is not good. We gotta do something. We can help him! The pencil's right here! A pencil has a lead inside. It's the lead that makes the drawing. Only lead doesn't grow on trees. It's made out of a mineral called graphite that's mined out of the Earth's crust. But how does the lead get inside a pencil? It's simple. Pencils are made with rods of lead and two wooden boards. Grooves are cut into the boards and the lead's placed in them. The heads are glued together and cut into pencils. The artist tool is ready. This isn't going to work. Oh, give me a place to stand and I shall move the pencil through the air.
Try and get it closer to the drawing. Uh, you gotta lift it up a little. You gotta push it harder. Uh, uh, uh. No, like we're blockheads. Look, there's a pencil sharpener. A piece of lead. That's all we need. All right, let's check out how it was done by the old scores. By the great masters, like us. Yeah, she could use a little more hair. And a hat, too. And a bow around her neck. Beautiful. And your sock has got to be in there. Yeah, let's keep drawing. Tom Thomas, are you still sleeping? Fixies? No need to thank us. Uh, where is my drawing? What have you done to it? <gasps> if Mom sees this piece of art you created, she'll go and faint. I know it. From happiness, right? Fright's more like it. Does that look like my mom? Uh, well then, give it to your dad. Your dad won't faint. I know it. But it's my mom's birthday, not my dad's. You gotta be kidding me. There's also a famous painting like that. It's called the Black Square. It's a classic. You don't think she'll like it? People want to remember the highlights of their lives. And so they take photos of nature, of their families, of themselves, even of the food they eat. People have been doing this even before the invention of photography, by drawing. An artist might draw the sun, a river, some apple trees, and soon he's made a landscape. And if the apples aren't on trees, but on a plate next to a vase, cup, or basket, then a still life is what it's called. If a person's in the center, then it's called a portrait. And when artists make pictures of themselves, it's called a self-portrait. Of course, it's easier for us to take a quick photo of things we pass along the way. But just like the old masters, we put a piece of our souls into our drawings. And if you draw more often, you'll see it for yourself. I promise you that. Maybe you could just give her one of your older drawings. Maybe you should just erase the mess you made of this one. That could work. Uh, erasing's gotta be easier than drawing. Uh. Whatever. There's no way you can make it worse. Uh. Hey, I think I know a way you can fix it. You can use the eraser for drawing. A portrait. Uh, portraits don't seem to work out too well for us. But a still life drawing is a piece of cake. Super! Uh-huh. Pretty good, right? Tom Thomas! Everything's on the table for breakfast. Mom, happy birthday. I drew this present for you. Thank you, Tom Thomas. What a lovely still life. So unusual. I tried really hard. We'll hang it up on the wall. Now, let's go eat. What would Tom Thomas have done without us? Yeah. Whenever you get into a jam, your real friends will always show up to rescue you. Germs. Hooray! Lunch! Tom Thomas, you brought your ball to lunch? It's filthy dirty. Don't you know how many germs are on it? Wash yourself up. Look, they're clean. Here, it's for you. I saw that. Now go back and wash your hands. Why? There are germs on Chusaka? A lot. <laughs> Come on, give it back. Again? Hi, Tom Thomas. Mm -hmm. Why are you so angry? You go wash your hands five times solid. This is germs, that is germs. Maybe they don't even exist. Of course they do. It's just that they're so tiny, you can't see them without a microscope. Tom Thomas, let's go into your dad's office. He's got a microscope. We can take a look at some germs. Germs, or microbes, are such tiny creatures, we need a microscope to see them. 
But they live everywhere. In the earth, the water, throughout the air, they're on everything, even on us. Some microbes are able to move around with the help of filaments or tails. Lots of microbes are harmless, but there are some dangerous ones too. If they get inside of you through your nose or your mouth, you could end up with a sore throat or a stomach ache. Turn it a little more. Stop. Now, take a look. <gasps> it's horrible. Hey, let me take a look. Wow, they're so scary. Hang on, do I really have germs like that living on my hands too? You got it. But I washed them, uh, seven times. With soap? No, just water. You have to use soap to get rid of germs, not just water. So which soap should I use? Either, this one, that one, they are both antibacterial, so they kill bacteria. And what about germs, will it kill them? Of course. Bacteria is just another name for germs. They're the same thing. Wash. Tom Thomas, give me a drop of that liquid soap. I want my hands to be real clean. Good job. That's the spirit. Hooray! We're clean! Let's go put that puzzle together. All right, but doesn't it have germs all over it? And they're on the soccer ball. What are we going to do? I think we should clean them with soap. No, clean the whole room. You're right. surrounded by millions of invisible microbes, including those that can cause an illness. But there is no need to be afraid of them if you follow these simple rules. Eat only washed fruits and veggies, keep your home clean, and wash your hands very well with soap, preferably an antibacterial one, and every day. Antibacterial soap protects you for a few hours after it's been washed off. It not only cleans your hands, but also stops germs from reproducing. There are useful microbes, too. Some bacteria can be added to milk to make yogurt and cottage cheese. Others are used for purifying water. Even inside of humans are a lot of useful bacteria that help their bodies digest food. <gasps> Nolik, what do you think? Are there microbes living on the soap? I don't know. We should wash that, too, just in case. Hey, what are you two doing in here? Washing the soap. With soap? So there won't be any germs on it. You've got to be joking. Listen, getting rid of all the microbes is impossible and unnecessary. You just need to protect yourself from the bad ones. Ah, uh, bacteria gone. Tom Thomas, I need a minute so I can... Mop your room. But I already washed it. What a good boy. The table's sparkling. <gasps> Just look how clean it is in here. Great job. What's going on? Nothing. You're not getting sick, are you? No. Tom Thomas, you did a great job in here, only you're taking this cleaning way too far. Understand? I've got you. And do you get it? Me? Get what? That the most important thing is to make sure you wash your hands with soap. Okay. To the germ fighters! <laughs> Making the world safer, one less germ at a time. The Marshmallow. Why are you so sad? Christmas is just around the corner. Maybe it'll be a lot of fun for you, but not for us. Why is that? Masi and Papus had a quarrel. Over what? Every 
every year we've got to repair those string lights. Oh, yeah, it's awful. Christmas is almost here and there's still so much work to be done. What do you think of that? <laughs> and this! <laughs> here you are. You don't hear the phone ring, you don't answer messages, and we have string lights that aren't working right. We need help. Papus, can't you give us a few more minutes? You said that an hour ago. Haven't you wasted enough time? We are not wasting time! Look at the camera! What? Boop! <laughs> <laughs> Got one of Masia? Look! Oh. <laughs> there you are. So, having a good time? Um, we were just about to leave and... You can stay right here. I've already done everything myself. You obviously have more important things to take care of. Uh, uh. So you left me over there, by myself, working my tail off, just so you can play? Where are you going? To relax. Oh, yeah? Fine with me. So now we won't have our Christmas! Don't panic, Nolik. We'll get your parents to forget. I, I mean, to forgive each other. How? My dad always says that the way to a woman's heart is to give flowers and candy. And where are we going to find flowers right now? Oh, we'll make them out of marshmallows. People are always trying to improve recipes. The French used an ancient Egyptian mallow root recipe to create the marshmallow, a fluffy mm. dessert that can decorate a cake or be roasted on an open fire. In Russia, pureed fruit and berries were mixed with egg whites and sugar and then whipped together to create their own fluffy dessert, zephyr. Some ingredients have changed over the years, but mm. these old desserts are still popular. What will they think of next? <laughs> We're gonna set him up on a date. <laughs> Masia's calling for you. It's urgent. Tom Thomas's uh, monitor isn't working. I thought she handles everything herself now. Papu, you're always so kind and love helping others. Come on. <sighs> All right. No, no, and no. I'm relaxing, I told you. But Tom Thomas won't have time to make his mom's card if you don't go. And then she'll end up without a present. Fine, I'll go. But I'm only going for his mom's sake. Sweets aren't just for eating. They can also be used to decorate a Christmas table. For instance, it's very easy to make this Christmas tree out of marshmallows. Make a row of marshmallows at the bottom of a plate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The second row has six of them. The third row, five. Then there's four, three, two, and a special one on top. Add breadsticks at the bottom as a trunk and sprinkle the plate with some sweet confetti. There, it's ready. With the help of some little cookie cutters, it's possible to make hearts and snowflakes out of marshmallows. Or you could make a reindeer. Put a candy cane through a marshmallow, use sugar beads for eyes and a nose, and pretzels for antlers. Beautiful, right? Merry Christmas! I don't get what's going on. The monitor's working. What did you call me for? Uh, I didn't call. Hmm, and you've got nothing for me to do here. No. Ah, oh, then I guess you came to apologize? Uh, no. You know what? I have had enough. Uh, well... Huh? What's it say? For Masya? Uh... For me? Yeah, for you. <laughs> That's so sweet. I hope you can forgive me for yelling at you. I'm just tired. No, I should apologize. It was bad of me to leave you alone. And where are the children? It's almost Christmas. There you are. Come here. Papu, <laughs> Masia, <laughs> Oh, my sweetie. <laughs> yeah. Hooray! Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. The traffic light. Yellow, green. All right, let's go. Tom Thomas, why did we stop? There's a crosswalk. When there are lines like that, you have to let pedestrians cross. Go on. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good trip. Stop now. There's no crosswalk. But that's a crossing.
station gate, Fire. You have to let the train pass. Wow, that is cool. Hi there, Nolik. Come on down. Check out this traffic light. It's new. Is that a real traffic light? Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. It looks awesome. Nolik, where are you going? Stop. Today. Now look at it. Uh, you were supposed to let me cross. You ran into the street when the light was red. A traffic light is a street lamp that sends multicolored signals to vehicles and pedestrians so they don't get in each other's way when they're on the road. When the light is red, it means stop. You must stay where you are. A yellow light tells drivers, caution, prepare to stop. You are only allowed to start crossing the street after the traffic light changes to the color green. And even then, it's important to remember, look both ways before crossing. Got it? You can only cross on green, Nolik. Even really little kids know that. But the light was green. No, it was red. No, green. It, it was, was red. red. It was green, I swear. Maybe you're colorblind or something. Yeah, possibly. Uh, what does it mean if you're colorblind? It means you can't tell colors apart. So you don't know which one's red and which one's green. Uh, that's what I am. Right. <laughs> you never mixed up colors before this. Okay. What color is that nightstand over there? Uh, it's red. And the plane up there? Oh, that's green. How about me, huh? What color am I? Green is bluish, brown is gray. With both dots. I'm what? It's true. He's colorblind. Poor kid. Told ya. Wasn't my fault. All right. We'll sort it out at home. And what are we gonna do with the traffic light? We can fix it. And we'll fix your car, too. All right. What color's the car? Purple? If you say so. We got work to do. So take a seat before you mix something else up. The road can be a dangerous place. There are so many cars and pedestrians on it, and all of them are in a rush to get where they're going. But be careful. Even if a driver notices a pedestrian on the road and brakes, it can still take quite some distance before the car comes to a complete stop. To avoid disaster, have respect for one another. If you need to cross the street, go to the nearest traffic light, crosswalk, or sign with a pedestrian on it. While you're still on the sidewalk, look to your left and then to your right and see how far away any cars, motorcycles, or bicycles are. If they're close, then just stay where you are. If the driver is responsible and polite, he will stop for you if he sees you from a distance. If you want to make yourself more visible when it's dark, attach safety reflectors to your clothes and then it will be safe for everyone on the road. Thomas, test it out. Turning the lights on. So, is it right? Yeah. Take your places. All right, let's cross. Ready, set, go! The game is up. You aren't colorblind, Nolik. You know what you are? You're a feigner. Me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I got a little of it right in here. And once in a while, it goes up here. Uh, what's a feigner, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Buttered bread. It's not right to eat when you're playing a game. I know your mom told you that. Come on, stop distracting me. Oh no, that 
that's the game. Now that's what you call Murphy's Law, Nolik. <laughs> no, that's the law of buttered bread. The law of buttered bread. <laughs> There's no way that's a real law. People say that bread always lands butter side down. Scientists laugh at that, but there is a grain of truth in it. First of all, a sandwich usually falls from the low height of a table, and so it only has time to make a half turn. Second, the side of the bread with the butter is heavier, and that pulls it towards the ground. And third, people remember the bad things that happened to them. So, they believe that butter bread always lands the wrong way. That's just goofy. I don't believe in that law. It's true, and not just for buttered bread, but any open-faced sandwich. Then let's do an experiment. We got tons of food in here. We just cover some bread with it, and then throw it. All right, let's do it. Well, jelly side down. Uh-huh. And the cheese went down. And the chocolate spreads out of luck, too. The bologna didn't do any better. Do you believe me now? Not yet. Let's keep going. We should try some other methods of throwing. Oh, that's everything. There's nothing left. No, there's still some turkey. Where did you see that? Here it is. Take some from this plate instead. Your mom already cooked it. Hey, turkey, show them how you're supposed to fall. Aha! Didn't I, uh, tell ya? You vandals! Why are you throwing food all over the place? It's simply awful. Hey, give it back! Please, we're testing the law of buttered bread. You gotta be kidding. Your mom is gonna love you for that. Can you please put the sandwich on a plate already? It's too heavy for us to keep holding it up. Good. There you go. Tom Thomas, do you have any idea at all how nutritious that turkey is? And delicious, I'd imagine. And turkey's a healthy food that has lots of protein, vitamins, and what do you call them? Micro-elements. That's not all. Eating that turkey could make you grow. If you eat that sandwich, you could grow a centimeter. I think that's true. Yeah, and it'll give you some extra strength, which you're gonna need when you clean up your kitchen. Humans eat food not only to make them strong, but also to grow and develop. Take a look at all these different foods. Do you think they have anything at all in common? Well, actually, they do. All foods contain nutrients like proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Combining them properly is the science of nutrition. Foods with fats and carbohydrates give humans energy, while those with protein are essential for helping children grow. People love to eat food that is delicious, fresh, and assorted. Try to eat all sorts of good foods like salads and soups, cereals, potatoes, vegetables, and meats, and not just sandwiches. But when it's time for a little snack, a sandwich can be just right, and it's so easy to make. to all of our bread. There's only one slice left. I made an experiment. A real one. I see. Well, science requires sacrifice. And there's no doubt that scientific experience is way better than playing with the phone all day. Right? Mm-hmm. Can I have another piece of turkey? I don't know why, but I'm really hungry today. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's what I call Murphy's Law. No! That's what they call the law of buttered bread, Dad. Did you hear? The law is a law. 92, the wheel. 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 
99, 100. And 101, 102, 103, 104. Oh, I forgot. And 100 and... No, Lick. Hey, come on. Tom Tom has promised to give me a ride outside on his bicycle. I gotta get going. Lucky you. I'd love to ride on a bike. Yeah, it would be a lot of fun. You're not allowed to go. Why can't we? Tom Thomas isn't your friend, all right? He only invited me. If you want to take a ride on a bicycle, then go find your own human friend to invite you. Well, Tom Thomas, you ready to go? We can't. There's no way we can ride this. The tire's got a hole. I try to fill it, but the air comes out. Well, then what should we do? I thought you'd know what. You're the fixie here. We, I mean, I didn't study it yet. Hang on! Tula, did you? Wait a sec. We found a hole in one of the tires of the bicycle. Hmm. You mean the one that only gives rides to friends? Don't be like that. Please help me out. I thought Tom Thomas was only a friend of yours. Uh, why don't you go and ask him yourself? He could be your friend, too. For thousands of years, wheels have been helping people all over the world. The wheel's ancestor is a lock. People would put logs under heavy loads to move them. Then people came up with the idea of slicing the log and connecting the slices with an axle. And there it was, the wheel. Wheels made life more convenient. Later came wheels with spokes, metal rims, and rubber tires. Soon people were wheeling around the world in and on all sorts of vehicles. Potters, mills, clocks. There are just so many different uses for a wheel. And with the steam train, steamboat, and cars, wheels spread all over the world. They even reached the planet Mars. The wheel really is one of the simplest and yet most amazing of all human inventions. Whew, it's off. So what's next? Now you take out the inner tube. You mean this rubber thing? Yeah, that's your inner tube. There's a hole there somewhere. Pump it up, Tom Thomas. Then we can see where the air is coming out. <laughs> that's not a good way to find the hole, Noah. Why is it good? Because the hole might be really tiny. Then how do you find it? To find it, we need water. How come? Yeah, how come? Now I get why we need water. There, see those tiny bubbles? Yeah, do you see them? That's the air from inside of the tube. That means the hole is right there. Nolik, you're a genius. Hooray, here's the hole I found, look. Will you let me put on the glue? In my pack -a mat I have just the right kind for this. The hole is right here, right where I found it. But first, we have to make sure that the rubber is dry. Looks like it's dry. Then let's put the glue on. It's all fixed. Finish! All right, it's ready to go. Hooray! Digit Tula, you coming with us? I don't know. We weren't invited. I'm sure he'll invite you. Right, Tom Thomas? Of course I will. We're friends, aren't we?
show off, Derda. And one. Ha! Check that out. What's going on? <laughs> it's a shame Fire didn't see that. I'm just uh, training for school. You're the one that's doing all these twists and turns for Fire. Hmm, me? It never even crossed my mind. No, like slow down. <sighs> Tula, why don't we go and play some chess? Don't you think that figure skating's beautiful? Turn me. Uh. How cool! <laughs> Like that. I just got a pair of tickets to see the one and only Vector. <gasps> Splendid! And who's going with you? Actually, I don't know. I haven't thought about it yet. What's there to think about? Just invite the most beautiful girl in our school, right? Yeah, not a bad idea, my friend. Did you hear that? The most beautiful one will get invited. Well, I'm not even interested. And you know what? Neither am I. is full of beauty. There seems to be no end to the beautiful plants and animals and the gorgeous mountains, forests, and lakes. But even that's not enough for people. They create their own handmade beauty, too. Artists paint beautiful pictures. Composers write beautiful music. Architects create beautiful buildings. And fashion designers make beautiful clothes. Not even scientists stay out of it. They create beautiful ideas. These ideas can be the basis for the creation of new technologies that make people's lives better. Everyone has their own idea of what's beautiful. There are as many opinions as there are people. But everyone tries in their own way to be beautiful. Both people and fixies. Please help me, Tula. How can I become beautiful? Huh. I don't know. Go and ask Verda. Look at her. She's got it. What has she got? What's the most beautiful thing about her? Oh, well, her hairpin, her hairstyle. The green looks great on her. Green looks great. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, see you later. Hmm? Tula. Huh? What's your opinion? Fire, do you think he likes Simka? Looks like he does. Is it because she's a redhead? Orange? Hmm, now I get it. Well, is that close to her color? Not really. It needs more green. What makes a person really beautiful? Fancy clothing? Bright nail polish? Dyed hair? Those don't make you look your best. Here's a much more reliable recipe. First, wash off and comb your hair. See? You're looking more beautiful already. Now change those dirty and wrinkly clothes for clean ones. Huh? That's even more beautiful. And finally, if you eat less sweets and get plenty of exercise, then you'll surely become a handsome boy <laughs> or a gorgeous girl. Fire? What's up? Do you think you could get an autograph from Vector for me? You got it. I love his song so much. So do I. Especially that one that goes... Computer, 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 you are super. I play my computer and turn it up real loud. I play it all morning, all day, and through the nighttime. But no, 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 that's not allowed. <laughs> I had no idea you were such a fanatic. You know, I'm not going to get you his autograph. Why won't you? Because you'll get it yourself. You know what I got? An extra ticket. <gasps> I thought you were going to take the most beautiful girl. All of you are beautiful, and you're the most fun to be around. Let's go. Stop! Hang on! Oh, Simba? Or is it Verda? Where are you going? What do you mean, where? To the concert. <gasps> mm. <gasps> mm. Verda? No, Simka. Or vice versa. I'm so confused. Come on, Tula. Can't you recognize them? This one's Simka, that one's Verda. Let's go, or we'll be late. Hmm. Blondes are always the lucky ones. Yeah. I guess we should have made our hair blonde like Tula's. The program. All right. Let's check in. Say good morning. Good morning. Lift your arm for me. 
Lower your arm down. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, Professor Eugenius. Hello, Fixies. Nice to see you today. So what is it you're inventing today? I'm improving the manipulator. Now the device has sight, hearing, and even a voice. Good morning. Oh, wow. If this thing had a brain, it would be just like a human. <laughs> but it does have a brain. See how Professor Eugenius attached a computer to the mechanical arm? The computer's a brain, you mean? Well, not quite. The computer's just a piece of metal. Good morning. What makes a computer intelligent are the programs inside. Imagine that you came home from school and found a note from your mom. Change your clothes, eat lunch, clean the dishes, and do your homework. That's about what a computer program is like. It's a set of commands that a computer carries out in sequence, one after another. Programs are also called applications. There are a lot of them in computers, tablets, and phones. It's the computer programs that make these devices so smart. There we go. I have tweaked the program. Let's see. Now the manipulator, upon my command, uh, uh, is going to wash this dirty mug. Manipulator, a dirty mug. Now, eliminate the problem. Executing. The problem has been eliminated. <laughs> I don't think it understood what you said. <laughs> Let's try it again. Clean up the shards. Don't understand. Well, just sweep the floor. Don't understand. Oh. How about rid the laboratory of any foreign objects? Understood. Executing. I see two foreign objects. Hey! What are you doing? Hey! Stop it right now! They're not foreign objects, they're my friends. That's better. Another foreign object. I'm not foreign. Another foreign I belong object. here. Foreign. I belong here. Foreign. I belong. Foreign. <laughs> Enough! Stop it! Down! What? Can't get us? You need a longer arm. Understood. Extending arm. Stop! No. Sit! Lie down! Down! Oh, over here. Right. For sure. It must have some glitch. Ah! Modern devices often work under the command of different computer programs. And these programs can malfunction. For instance, a car alarm might go off for no apparent reason. Or a computer stops following your commands and starts doing strange things on its own. Or your phone freezes up and doesn't respond no matter how many times you poke at it. If this happens to one of your devices, it's recommended that you restart it. Or turn off your device and turn it back on again. Sometimes it helps and the device comes back to life. But if that doesn't help, you may need a repairman to figure out if it's a problem with the program or with the device itself so he can fix it. How are we going to stop this thing? Oh, we need to disconnect the manipulator from the computer. That's brilliant. I'll distract him and you pull the plug out. <laughs> Don't. That's my sensitive spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> and one. Ow. Yeah. And two. Ah, I see what's wrong. What? what? The program has a little mistake. There we go. Now the manipulator won't act up. Let's check it. Hang on, no way. That's enough for today. We still have to clean up this mess. Don't worry. The manipulator can help us out. 
The toothpaste. Astronaut food. Ready. Rocket ready. And who's flying to the sun? Me. I'm ready. Ooh. A real hero. Tom Thomas. Did you see? There it is. You nearly spoiled a vital experiment. Of global, interplanetary significance. Spoiled what? Our scientific testing of the latest toothpaste formula. I will brush my teeth with it. And I, as chief dentist, will be monitoring the testing. And so, I don't want you even touching it. Great. How am I supposed to fly to the sun now? Strange. They make that toothpaste for kids. So? Then why is your mom using your dad then? That's right. I'm gonna go tell her. Mom, that new toothpaste. I should test it. No, I'm using your dad, because he's a responsible person. And so am I. I'm very responsible. Who knew? Your room's a total mess. I had no time to clean it. You didn't water the plant. I forgot. Did you brush your teeth? Yeah, for a whole minute, too. You're supposed to brush your teeth for two minutes, in the morning and at night. Sorry. <laughs> Great toothpaste, honey. If you don't want to get a toothache, you need to take good care of your teeth by brushing them with a toothbrush and toothpaste. Toothpaste helps remove food that's stuck on your teeth, kills harmful bacteria, and keeps your teeth strong, healthy, and beautiful. Toothpaste should be in every house. Adults should use toothpaste made for adults, and kids should use toothpaste that is healthy and safe for younger teeth. It's important to make sure you're using a toothpaste that's right for your age. Smell it. Don't worry. Well, <sighs> it smells like bubble gum. Hey! Just a peek at the collar. That's all. Come on. Do you want to spoil the experiment? Now put that toothpaste right back. Hmm. Again? <laughs> well now, so we caught you again. I want to try this toothpaste so bad, but how? Well, what if you... <laughs> Do you know how to brush your teeth correctly? Let's check. First, take your toothbrush and rinse it with water. Then squeeze on a bit of toothpaste. A small pea-sized drop is all that you'll need. Now, one, brush the outside of your front teeth up and down. Two, brush the backs of those teeth from the gums on down. Three, open your mouth real wide and brush the teeth in the back. These are the teeth that you use for chewing. Go back and forth, over and over. You should brush a full two minutes, no less. Now it's time to rinse out the toothpaste from your mouth and clean the brush. That's right, the brush needs to be cleaned too. And please, don't be lazy. If you brush your teeth two times a day, they'll stay in great shape for many years to come. Mom, Dad, see? I've done everything. Well done. And I promise that I'm going to brush my teeth the right way, as long as I need to, and... And twice a day? Only let me be a part of your awesome experiment, please, would ya? Well, I don't know. I think we could try it. Oh. What? Well, we also have this foam for teeth. Who's going to test that? Me! A real hero. How many ways did we try to get him to brush his teeth before that didn't work? We never sparked his imagination before. 
Your idea about the experiment was brilliant. Simka, do you think we should tell him? The answer is no. We can't disrupt the experiment. <laughs> The umbrella. Well, so why isn't it working? We'll figure it out, colleague. Let's start by disconnecting the hoist. Otherwise, you know. <laughs> ah, Tula, you're finally here. Where have you been? Looking for an umbrella. What? What do you need an umbrella for? Because it'll be pouring rain today. Where'd you get that idea? I heard it. <laughs> You're leaving already? Yeah, I have to wash the car before I go in. Ah, then I'll take an umbrella to work. Hmm? <laughs> you know the omen, dear. Once you wash your car... It'll rain? <laughs> <gasps> oh! Tom Thomas's mother was just joking. You don't joke with omens. It's going to be raining for sure. But it's no big deal if you've got an umbrella. <laughs> Umbrellas are an ancient invention. They're almost 3,000 years old. In China and Egypt, umbrellas were made out of leaves, feathers, and paper. Servants carried them over their kings to protect them from the hot sun. When umbrellas became fashionable in Europe, people started using them as cover from rain. The most convenient are folding umbrellas. Their design is simple. The edge of the fabric is attached to ribs. When you open an umbrella, the ribs spread out in all directions and stretch the fabric over your head. Automatic umbrellas can open very quickly. Just press the button and it pops right open, keeping your clothes dry as if there was no rain at all. An unopened umbrella can be used as a cane. And if the umbrella's handle is also collapsible, then it can be stored in a bag when it isn't needed. Well, hmm, the contacts are normal. And all of the wires are in place. Then what's the problem? I don't know. We're gonna have to test it. Tula, put away your umbrella. But the omen calls for rain. Ah, one omen doesn't count. Manipulator, get me a screwdriver. Understood. Executing. Oh, the manipulator's joints are creaking. See, that's an omen of rain, too. <laughs> it's an omen that it's time for a little oil. Want to help me? Just a sec. I'll help you. Well, so much for that omen. It's going to rain anyhow, I know it. Just take a look at those flowers drooping. Isn't that an omen? The reason that they're drooping is because Elisa is on vacation. And my colleague forgot to water that plant. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll finish the repair and I'll water them, I promise. Ah, this is the reason that it broke. This damaged part has to be replaced. Come on and help me. I'll get a replacement from the warehouse. Fire's flying low, isn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what? When birds start flying really low to the ground. <laughs> Fire isn't a bird. But he's flying low, didn't you see? Tula, give me a sledgehammer, would you? And put away the umbrella already. Look, there isn't a cloud in the sky. That's because it's morning. You have to know this, Owen. <laughs> When there's no clouds in the morning, then in the afternoon, it's sure to... We're standing inside with a roof over our head. It can't break. <laughs> Look, it's raining. You see? I told you so, and you didn't believe me.
don't need to water the plants. You're right about that. Let's walk together. But how's the weather? Outside is sunny. A perfect day. But there's a superstition. The solar eclipse. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Tom Thomas, what's that for? There's a solar eclipse today. Look, and I'm gonna watch it. That's so cool. And what do you need the box for? Simka, did you forget? It's dangerous to look straight into the sun. Huh? It's so dark. How long until it starts to get dark? Half an hour. We'd be happy to help you out with that, wouldn't we? Only one thing I don't get, the light will be gone? Like, gone forever? <laughs> How did you come up with that? There have been plenty of eclipses before this one. In outer space, everything is in a state of constant movement. The Earth revolves around the Sun, and the Moon revolves around the Earth. Sometimes the moon gets in between the sun and the earth and covers the sun. And so, for a little while, the sun no longer appears as a bright glowing sphere, but a simple black ball. <laughs> this phenomenon is called a solar eclipse. But a solar eclipse can only be seen by humans and fixies that are in its shadow while it's happening. But anything can happen. Like, what if something gets stuck? Then, would it stay dark forever? And when has that ever happened? It's happening now! Nolik, either help us out or stop bothering us. All right, look. This is the Earth, here, and the Moon, there. The flashlight's our sun. <laughs> you see? The Moon's shadow falls on the Earth. And now watch. When the moon starts to go, the light comes back. Did it get stuck? Just like I said, the end is near. The end of the light. It's just that someone should be more careful with the glue. It's possible to take an ordinary box and make a special device that was invented by people long ago. It's called a camera obscura. This clever invention was used by artists as well as scientists. It was the basis for the very first photo cameras. It's quite easy to make your own camera obscura. Cut out a small square on one side of a box, cover it with aluminum foil, and poke a little hole in the center of it. Put a sheet of paper on the opposite side. The light will pass through the hole and shine through the darkness. And on that screen, you'll see the eclipse. Only it will appear upside down. To see it, you'll need to look at it from above. But make sure not to let extra light in. Beautiful. And remember to be careful with those scissors. But don't you understand that it's scary in the dark? And it's impossible to live in it. Don't be a coward. You glow in the dark. But what about Tom Thomas? Is he going to have to walk like this? You'll be able to light up the way for him. And if I run out of juice? I'll use my flashlight. And when the batteries run out? Relax, I'll find more. In the dark? No, we have to get prepared right now. Can you see the sun? Uh-huh. One minute left, you ready? A minute, what? Hold on, I'm not ready yet. I'll get charged a little more. No, I need to get those batteries. 10 seconds, nine seconds, eight seconds. What should I do? Six. What should I do? Five. Ah! Four, three, two. Marcia. Here it goes. Whoa. <gasps> it's totally beautiful. Nolik, come on out. You'll miss everything. 
It's amazing. Class, it's so awesome that we did this. Look, look. Now the sun's coming back out. Show it to me. It really didn't get stuck. You mean the whole eclipse is done? It was cool, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Only I missed the whole thing. <sighs> well, you'll see the next one, right? If you don't get spooked again. You're not going to throw the box away, are you? I'll save it for you. I can use it to store something useful. Batteries, for instance. What if tomorrow's the end of the light and Nolik's not ready for it? <laughs> <laughs> the television. Now watch carefully. First I put some of the yellow. Then I add some of the blue. Mix them together. And now we've got the color green. Isn't that great? Class! And it's not just paint either. Your television works by mixing colors too. Really? No way. That's embarrassing. No, like you should know that by now. We live inside of that television together with Papas and Masia. Come on! The picture on a TV screen is made up of tiny glowing dots that are either red, green, or blue. When blue and green dots are glowing together, we see the color light blue, like in a clear blue sky. When green and red mix, we see a yellow sun. And when all three colors shine brightly together, then we see white on the screen. It may be hard to believe, but it's true. All of the colors on the screen are made up of only three colors, red, green, and blue. So everything that's on the TV screen all comes from three colors. Red, green, and blue. Isn't that great? Where do you learn all this stuff, huh? Actually, don't you think it's about time we got you a new TV? What do you say? Sure. <sighs> great. And then I'll take this one with me to work. We just started shooting a new show about old things. Hooray! I'm gonna get an awesome new TV. Simka Nolik. Did you hear that? Are you here? They must have gone home for something. <gasps> Wait a sec. Their home is... Their, their home is in the television. This was such a nice home for us. It's okay. We'll move into one of the other TVs here. The one in the living room? Why not? It's a nice new one with a huge flat screen. We're gonna have to leave the sofa behind. What? There's just not enough room in that TV. Then I'm not going to move there. Then where? Into the fridge? No, thank you. My nose is running. How about the stove? And what about us? You're the one that says that a stove is off limits for kids. Maybe the microwave will do. No, it's dangerous there. Then, in the piano. What piano? There's no piano in Tom Thomas's apartment. What a shame. A piano is the best place of all to call home. Huh. It looks like he already put us into a box. We're trapped. Good. <laughs> Dad! Hey, Dad! I changed my mind. I really don't want to get a new TV. Hmm. Why don't you want a new one? I'm... Just used to this one. You're a junk collector. <laughs> uh huh. Just like you, Dad. People have always dreamt of seeing things that are far, far away. All of us have heard fairy tales about crystal balls and magic mirrors. But the magic of television began only a hundred years ago. The screens on the first TVs were so small that people had to attach magnifying glasses to them to make the picture big enough for watching. Ever since those first TVs, both the outside and the inside of this amazing device continue to change. Bulky picture tubes have been replaced by electronic chips. Screens have grown wider and wider as TV sets have changed from big heavy boxes to flat light screens that can hang on the wall like a picture. And someday, real soon, it's quite possible that TVs will be made to roll up like a rug and people will be able to carry them anywhere. All right, I'll put it back, but under one condition. If it breaks, we'll buy you a new one right away. Yeah, sure. 
We'll never let it break, right? Never, never ever! Well, that's that. The color is completely wrong, see? I guess we're going to have to throw it out after all. Wait, wait, wait. I know how to make it work perfectly. Watch this. One. Two. you do it? I just mixed the three colors together, like I told you. Red with green and blue. 